Good morning, and welcome to the Scarborough Walk of Fame ceremony. I'm Fianna Ko, and I'm the marketing manager at Scarborough Town Center. I'm delighted to welcome our inductees and rising stars, their guests, and everyone who is here today to celebrate their accomplishments of our Scarborough community. I would like to begin by acknowledging the indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. We take this moment to acknowledge the importance of the land which we each call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relations between nations and to improving our understanding of local indigenous peoples and their cultures. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unstated territory of all the Inuit, Métis, and First Nation people that call this nation home. Please join me in a moment of reflection to acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past and to reconsider Consider how we can each in our own way move forward in a spirit of reconciliation continue to make exceptional contributions to our community. Congratulations to our 2022 inductees and rising stars. On that note, I'd like to introduce Larry Watmore, president of Scarborough Community Renewal Organization, known as Grow in the Community, to share more about today's celebration. Thank you, uh, Vienna, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, the Scarborough Community Renewal Organization is proud to be the producer of the Scarborough Walk of Fame, having taken over um, last year from the founding board of the Walk of Fame, which since 2006 has done such an exceptional job of nurturing and growing this event into one of Scarborough's signature programs. In fact, we sometimes like to call it the Starborough Walk of Fame, which seems to fit really well with today. Yeah. The Scarborough Community Renewal Organization is an organization of passionate and committed Scarborough volunteer leaders who work collectively with our community leaders, business organizations, resident associations, and public institutions to build a better Scarborough. We're so fortunate to be able to live, work, learn, and play right here in Scarborough. Because good things are happening here. And that's because we have so many inspiring people who do important work here to enhance the quality of our life here in Scarborough. Now, some of those inspiring people leave, and they become ambassadors for Scarborough on the world stage. And we're here today to celebrate Scarborough leaders from both of those circles. And we're going to do it today with the help of many partners and sponsors whose contributions have enabled us to present such a classy event as befits the occasion. I'm going to do a few thank yous at our after party later today at Centennial College, which I'm hoping many of you will be able to attend. But there's a couple of thank yous I'd like to do right away. First of all, to our 60 plus volunteers from Centennial College who are here today taking care of all the game day logistics, if you will. Uh, to make sure that all the pieces of this event work so seamlessly uh, under the direction of um, Centennial College faculty members who I'm also very grateful to have with us today. I also want to thank Marg Middleton, Chair of the Scarborough Walk of Fame Committee. And I know Marg wants today to be all about the inductees, but we have to make just a little bit of today about Marg, who has been the guiding light. <laughs> who has been the guiding light of the Scarborough Walk of Fame since 2008. 
And for the past two years, Marg has been working tirelessly on this event, leading a high-performing team of volunteers, but also dedicating an enormous amount of her own time, skill, passion, and energy to make all this happen. And I'm pleased to say that Marg is with us today. We weren't sure if she was going to be able to, but I believe Marg is somewhere in the balcony, if I'm not mistaken. But Marg is here today somewhere. Marg, thank you for all you've done to make this happen today. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce Toronto City Councillor Jennifer McKelvey. First elected to uh, Toronto City Council in 2018, Jennifer represents Scarborough Rouge Park and is the chair of Scarborough Community Council. Professionally, Jennifer is an environmental geologist, received her PhD from the University of Toronto, and is a proud alumnus, alumna rather, of University of Toronto Scarborough. For almost a decade, Jennifer served as a research scientist at the Nuclear Waste Management Organization and as research director at the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. And, perhaps most important of all, as some of you will know, Jennifer was the founding president of the Scarborough Community Renewal Organization before entering politics. And we're very grateful at SCRO for all that Jennifer has done to help make SCRO the kind of organization it is today. Jennifer, welcome. That was a little unexpected. Um, thank you so much, Larry, for the very kind and, and generous introduction, especially being in a room of so many incredible Scarborough heroes and stars. Um, as Larry did mention, I had the great, great honour to be asked by the Scarborough Rotary Club in 2015 if I would be the founding president of the Scarborough Community Renewal Organization. And it was a wonderful challenge and I was so happy to undertake that endeavour because like all of you, I felt that Scarborough really needed to be known broader. We knew how great Scarborough was. We knew how wonderful all the people are that are here, and we just couldn't understand why the rest of Toronto didn't. And I think through the work that has continued under the amazing Larry Watmore, um, that organization has really grown, and now with this endeavor with the Scarborough Walk of Fame, we are telling all of Toronto, we are telling all of Ontario, we are telling all of Canada that Scarborough is somewhere to watch, and we have the best residents doing amazing, amazing things. So it's a real delight to be here today, to come full circle, to be alongside my great colleague, stand up there, Deputy Mayor Thompson. And I have the real honor over the last two years to serve as chair of Scar Scarborough Community Council. And that was the job I wanted the most coming in here because Scarborough is where my heart is, it's where my home is. And I'll take one more minute, and I know Larry said it, but it can't be said enough that while we're celebrating all these amazing stars, um, behind the scenes we have a real hero in Marg Middleton. And Marg was the founding president of the Scarborough Business Association, which brought together all of the businesses in Scarborough with a collective voice for advocacy. And at the same time, I was starting the Scarborough Community Renewal Organization, and Marg was somebody that was always there for me on the telephone when I needed advice on how we would start this nonprofit. And so I had a, a great debt of um, great gratitude towards Marg as well. So thank you for recognizing Marg here today as well with all of these wonderful stars and heroes. And I'll sneak in one more because he's sitting in the back and he's being a little shy there too. So maybe we can get Dave Hardy to stand up and be recognized as well. And I mentioned that Scarborough Community Renewal Organization was founded by the Scarborough Rotarians that came together to do a study and Dave, Dave Hardy championed that study. 
um, and really came up with the recommendations that made um, SPRO possible, that made Scarborough Business Association possible, that made where we are today celebrating all these wonderful people here today possible. So thank you, Dave, too. Congratulations to all the stars um, on being recognized on the Walk of Fame, and I'm so excited to be able to walk past your names here in Scarborough Town Centre, a great partner every time that I come here. So congratulations. Thank you, Jennifer. Now it's my honor to introduce Dwayne Morgan. Born and raised in Scarborough and a spoken word artist, Dwayne has received the African Canadian Achievement Award, the Harry Jerome Award, and is a Canadian Urban Music Award recipient. Dwayne has published numerous books and is a 2013 Scarborough Walk of Fame inductee. Dwayne's work has taken him across Canada, the United States, Jamaica, Turkey, Trinidad, Bermuda, Barbados, England, and many more places. Dwayne's emphasis on quality has driven his success and has made him a well-respected component of Toronto's urban music community and the North American and global spoken word scenes. I would ask Dwayne to come up and take the stage. Thank you very much, uh, Larry, for the introduction. Good morning to everyone uh, who is here. Um, as Larry said, 10 years ago, I was sitting there uh, waiting for my star to be unveiled. So congratulations to all of the people we are welcoming into this family of uh, Scarborough. Uh, as was said before, it is an honor to have been asked to, to come back and to be a part of this celebration and to share uh, a couple of poems and to uh, write a couple of poems for today's occasion. So here we go. Tupac Shakur wrote of the rose that grew from concrete. Imagine having the audacity to grow where you are unwanted, to bloom in conditions not conducive to your success, to show off your beauty against the perceptions of your ugliness, forcing people to stop and take notice of your petals, not just your thorns. It wasn't that long ago, but there was a time when people shied away from saying that they were from Scarborough. But then, we were amalgamated into the megacity, our charm almost stolen, we became a forgotten part of Toronto, even though we were its backbone. Eventually, we realized our uniqueness and identity. We realized that we were roses, growing through the cracks in the concrete, with the audacity to claim a place misunderstood by those from outside while we began wearing Scarborough pride, like name brand designs, live it, wear it, we used our light, to illuminate the Hollywood sign, to shine in business, radio, and the TV, to grow up from the roots, empowering community, inspiring people to rise, we shine. No matter what others have to say, we are the roses that grow from concrete, and this is the Scarborough way. No one woke up one day with today as their dream, deciding to put themselves out there and overachieve so that they'd be given a star for everyone else to see. This was nobody's purpose, but through commitment to purpose, they are here. Regular people who grew up in the neighborhoods that we live in, went to the schools that we went to, ordinary people who have done extraordinary things with the hope of inspiring other ordinary people to do the same, to live a life where their names are remembered. Because we all have dreams, some buried deeply beneath pain and life experiences, but I pray that today serves as a reminder of what can happen when your dreams become your reality. None of our inductees are any more special than the rest of us here, 
but they all dared to dream. They woke up every day with the belief that they mattered, that they could make a difference, that they could inspire others. And the hope is that you see their stars, hear their stories, and say to yourself, if they can, I can too. Despite what you might see on social media or hear in the news, Scarborough has exceptionally deep roots, which also include you. And we need to keep branching out. So congratulations to each and every one of this year's inductees. Thank you for your Scarborough pride, your contributions, and everything that you have done. And may today serve as an inspiration for those Scarborough talents whose stars have yet to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Duane. It's great to have um, current stars of the Scarborough Walk of Fame stay so closely connected to us and be willing to contribute their time to the induction of future generations of Scarborough stars. So that's a great pattern for us to be following going forward. So Duane, thanks for being here. I'd now like to call upon Margaret Hurd, Vice President Operations and Development at Park Property Management, which is our wonderful celestial partner of today's event to say a few words. Margaret. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations to all of this year's inductees. Thank you for inviting us to be a part of this amazing event today. I am Margaret Hurd, Senior Vice President of Operations and Development at Park Property Management. Park Property Management was formed in 1975 to manage the real estate holdings, primarily residential rental apartment buildings for a family who had been investing in the Greater Toronto Area since 1961. At that time, most of the buildings were in Scarborough, long before the township was amalgamated into the City of Toronto. Its geographic size, and location near employment lands, highways, transit, and of course the cliffs of Scarborough Bluffs made it an ideal place to invest. We have grown since these early beginnings and now manage 93 purpose-built rental buildings, 15 of them, almost 20% of our company's total holdings are in Scarborough. The first acquisition in Scarborough was in 1964 at the corner of Brimley and St. Clair, and our last was purchased in 86 in Guildwood Village. We believe our Scarborough buildings are home to more than 6,000 residents and it is therefore our duty and privilege to support the community. We believe in the vitality of Scarborough so much so that we are currently building a new apartment building at the corner of Pharmacy and Finch containing 303 units. 10% of those will be affordable, something that we are very, very proud of. Added to that, we are almost in various stages of other de developments throughout the Greater Toronto Area. We truly consider Scarborough to be the perfect place to live out your dreams while enjoying all the dynamics of downtown life without actually having to go downtown. And what more can you ask for? Scarborough has the Toronto Zoo, the Rouge River Park, and Rouge River Park within its borders. Added to the locational importance is the cultural diversity of Scarborough, from farmers markets, community events, cultural festivals, Scarborough is where it's at. When our president, Gerd Wengler, who is a member of the North Scarborough Rotary Club, mentioned partnering with the Scarborough Walk of Fame, I said, we must do it. Having grown up in Scarborough myself, and after marrying, buying our first house in Scarborough, and doing most of my shopping in Scarborough, and much of it actually right here, um, it was a perfect fit, not only for Park's dedication to the area, but for me as well. The first time I saw the Walk of Fame, I was so very impressed. What a great way to celebrate the tremendous, inspiring, talented residents, or should I say emissaries of Scarborough, the wonderful leaders, innovators, celebrities, and up-and-comers, the rising stars. Each time I walk by the center court of the mall, it thrills me to see all these amazing names. Many I recognize, and a few that I don't, I Google to see what amazing accomplishments they have achieved. It's also so great to see the young children who drag their parents around the stars, reading names 
and who knows, dreaming their name will one day be emblazoned in the Scarborough Walk of Fame. It is our true honor to be this year's celestial partner. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. It's, it's great to see such a successful Scarborough business with deep roots here in Scarborough um, to, who had, that has really stepped up to contribute substantially to the success of this event today. So we're very grateful to Proc Park Property Management for maintaining such deep roots in Scarborough and for being so closely connected to what we're doing today. So thank you for that. And now, it's time to begin the recognition program. I'd like to call upon Dr. Craig Stevenson, President of Centennial College, to present our Rising Star Awards. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. What a wonderful, lovely morning it is. The sun is shining. We're meeting face to face, which is something I will never take for granted again. And most, most significantly, the Scarborough Walk of Fame is back. And it's back with Vivre. It's back with Verve. And it's back with Vigor. Up close and in person to celebrate our shining stars, whose meaningful accomplishments and rich contributions have left an indelible mark on this very special community of ours. I hope you are feeling as pumped and excited as I am to be here today. For today builds upon a vision, a vision cemented in 2003, when local leaders came together to determine what could be done to raise the visibility and reputation of Scarborough so that people across this city and indeed this province could witness what we already knew, that Scarborough is an extraordinary place filled, as Duane so poignantly put it, roses that have grown from concrete, highly talented, dynamic and compassionate individuals. As an anchor institution within Scarborough, deeply, deeply devoted to facilitating the growth and success of residents and businesses alike, the Centennial team knew early on that we had an integral pro role to play in those early discussions that eventually led to the creation of the Scarborough Walk of Fame in 2006. Since then, Centennial has continued to be an enthusiastic supporter of this key highlight of the community's calendar, hosting the very last Scarborough Walk of Fame at our conference center at our Progress Campus. And I absolutely must give credit for this to Anne Buller, Centennial College's President Emeritus and 2018 Scarborough Walk of Fame in inductee, who unfortunately couldn't be with us this morning but is very much here with us in spirit for ensuring that the college remains steadfast in our commitment to serving our community and celebrating its successes. Because that is the core of what Centennial is about, community. Community matters. You saw that during the most severe months of the pandemic when, for example, Centennial supplied frontline healthcare workers with personal protective equipment, designed and produced safety masks for Scarborough's health network on our 3D printers, strengthened food security in local neighborhoods, encouraged our Centennial family to buy local, joined with the City of Toronto and other post-secondary institutions across the city to establish the Higher Education Research Partnership and most, most significantly partnered with the Scarborough Health Network to open one of the city's 
city's busiest and most successful vaccination sites at our Progress campus, helping to ensure that more than 80% of Scarborough residents received at least two vaccine shots. Can we just give a round of applause to our healthcare workers? Well done, really. Thank you for that. So Centennial, which seeks to prepare, to educate and to inspire, and, our vision, as a, and as our vision statement professes, to transform lives and communities through learning. We couldn't be prouder at being part of today's proceedings, and in particular, the Rising Star Sponsor, a category dedicated to recognizing young leaders who are positively shaping our environment and proving that our future is indeed in good hands. So a huge thank you to the Scarborough Walk of Fame organ organizing committee led by Marge Middleton for giving Centennial this opportunity to be here today and for encouraging and investing in tomorrow's change agents. And could we please just give a round of applause to that committee and to all the volunteers, so many volunteers today. Well done. Well done. And so, without further ado, I would like to introduce our first rising star, Maya Moroz. Now, Maya is an avid activist and community volunteer, co-founder of Pinball for Change, a series of charity pinball tournaments to raise funds for local initiatives, such as the Downey Wenjack Fund and Holland Blue View Kids Rehabilitation. Maya has raised thousands, and I mean thousands of dollars for both local and global initiatives, including, wait for it, $26,000 to build classrooms and water wells for communities in Ecuador. And when I was talking to Maya earlier, she told me she was 16, just 16 when she raised all that money for Ecuador. Well done, Maya, well done, thank you. And from the sounds of it, committing her life to help others and putting others first is a character trait, a deeply personal value that runs through the very core of her, uh, her being. Am I right, Maya? Is that, yeah, absolutely. I, I thought that when I was reading all about you. For throughout her time at Sir Oliver Moat Collegiate Institute, Maya was involved in numerous activities, such as bake sales, food drives, and awareness campaigns, including leading the school's Me To We team that sought to make a difference. No more so than when she led the creation of Moat's United Voices, a social justice group dedicated to amplifying diverse voices and exposing and educating students on key issues. Hardly surprising then to hear that Maya is currently studying in the Gender and Social Justice and Teaching Programme at Trent University. And what a coup for Trent to have you as one of their students. I suspect you will make a real difference when you're there and be of one of Trent's alumnus to watch. You, like Hershey, have such a promising career and life ahead of you, where the path you carve will unquestionably lift the lives and spirits of others. Please, everybody, put your hands together and join me in applauding and congratulating Maya on her well-deserved recognition. Well done. for this honor. I am so lucky to have been born and raised here in Scarborough. My mother is a Chilean refugee who came to Scarborough at the age of five. And my father is of Ukrainian descent, whose parents moved to Scarborough many years ago. My parents are both teachers here in Scarborough and have nurtured a passion 
a passion for service in both my sibling and I from a young age. My grandparents chose to live in Scarborough and brought their cultural traditions and their work hard work ethic. They built lives with their young families to thrive in this, to thrive in this vibrant part of the city like so many of you. I'm truly thankful to have all my beloved mem family members here today. Without them, I couldn't have accomplished so many of my dreams. My story actually begins over 30 years ago here at the Scarborough Town Center. As a teenager, my father would come to the arcade here whenever he could to play pinball before going to the movies. He dreamed of one day having his own arcade and playing pinball with friends as a hobby. Who would have imagined that all these years later, we co-founded Pinball for Change and have made such an impact in the community and beyond. My father and I began hosting pinball tournaments as fundraisers for causes close to our hearts. I have never taken for granted my access to a rich education, and I was thrilled to be able to visit the classrooms our fundraising, fundraising built in the Amazon region in Ecuador for my 16th birthday. In recent years, we have shifted to fundraise for more local causes, such as the Downey One Jack Fund and the Holland Blurview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital. My 14-year-old sibling is a proud ambassador for autism services at Holland Blurview and I can't wait to see their bright future ahead. My passion for social justice activism became a huge part of my life when I led the MediWe team at my high school, Stralla Remote at Collegiate. Dr. Tony Leong was my music teacher and mentor. He saw in me the potential to lead events and use music as a tool to positively influence our mental health. He taught us that together our voices are stronger and that we have the power to change the world. It was Dr. Leong who nominated me to receive the Rising Star Award. I cherish his mentorship as a pre precious gift, and I hope to use him as an example when I become a teacher one day. I am the product of the people and places of which I was raised. I am so grateful to call Scarborough my home, and I am so inspired by all of those being honored here on this day. I sincerely thank the Scarborough Walk of Fame Committee, and I can't help but think how many new dreams are being born here today to enrich all of our futures. Thank you. Oh, sorry, we forgot to get the award. Now I would like to introduce another pretty remarkable individual and rising star, Hershey Sabothayan. Hershey has demonstrated a long-standing and notable commitment to Scarborough. At just 14, Hershey began volunteering at the Scarborough Historical Museum where she created new and innovative programming and actualized numerous events, including World Games Wednesday, Dance Saturday, Dog Days of Summer, and the Big Draw Arts Festival. Such was her dedication to the museum that Hershey was promoted to a mentorship role, coaching new volunteers, for which she received an Ontario Volunteer Service Award in 2019. And you'd think, wouldn't you, with all that creativity, that hard work and commitment to the museum, that it would consume any ordinary person's time. And it would normally, but not Hershey's, for Hershey is extraordinary. In addition to her commitment to the Scarborough Museum over the past five years, Hershey has thrown herself in to multiple global humanitarian programs, ranging from World Vision and the Waterloo Initiative through to free the children and Oxfam. 
all while pursuing an undergraduate degree in integrated biomedical engineering and health sciences at McMaster's. It just exhausts me reading the list of Hershey's activities, but let alone executing on them. And Hershey, you, your family, and the people you've served and served so effectively should be very proud of you at this very moment. For if every one of us, every one of us just did a fraction of what you do to volunteer and to make a difference in the communities in which we live, the world would be a far, far better place. Kudos to you, truly. So please, let's put your hands together and join me in applauding and congratulating Hershey on a well-deserved recognition. Scarborough resident ever since I immigrated to Canada in 2008. I was born and raised here and it's truly been remarkable to be a part of this community. Um, my journey at the museum started at the age of 14 and it's all thanks to my brother. My brother was actually a volunteer as well as a mentor before me and he's the one who recommended me such a great place to share my talents as grow as, and grow as a person and since then it's really shaped who I have like become today. The Scarborough Museum, it was truly an amazing place to volunteer and mentor as well as teach many individuals. I met a lot of amazing people and people to this day I'm very thankful for, especially uh, I would like to call out Ravisha Ravindre, who was actually uh, one of the rising stars in 2018. She was also a volunteer and a mentor at Scarborough Museum and she is also the one who has nominated me here today and I'm very thankful for her for giving me this opportunity because I truly feel very honored. Um, I would also like to thank my teachers at school, especially in high school where I was allowed to be part of several global associations such as World Vision, Oxfam, and Free the Children. It, all, it gave me a chance to grow as an individual and broaden my skills even more so than I did before. Um, finally, it's truly a pleasure to see everyone here today, and especially to the inductees. I am very grateful for your accomplishments and what you've done for Scarborough. It makes me feel like I should also take the challenge of possibly becoming an inductee one day, and I would like to thank everyone else today. Thank you. amazing this morning and fills you with such joy with such incredible and remarkable young women thank you to each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today to recognize thank and celebrate these two very remarkable individuals truly rising stars here in Scarborough 
which is a jewel in the GTA. You have been a marvellously supportive audience and all the very best and I hope you stay and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Craig, and uh, c congratulations, Harshi. Congratulations, Maya. That's wonderful. I'd now like to introduce a pair of very special presenters. Our celebrated hosts today, Deb McGrath and Colin Mockery, have given their time to the Scarborough Walk of Fame for many years. These two great Canadian talents bring a wealth of experience to our stage and we are grateful to them for their grace, their professionalism, and their generosity. Deborah is a, a proud Toronto girl, born and raised. Deb graduated from Ryerson University, now known as Toronto Metropolitan University, uh, for theater, and then joined the famed Second City. Working extensively in television, film, and theater, Deb has enjoyed a successful and rewarding career in the world of voice, doing everything from commercials and animation to being the voice of winners. Deb has won two Canadian Comedy Awards and in 2009 was inducted into the Scarborough Walk of Fame. After six years as the mayor in Little Mosque on the Prairie, Deb's recent gigs have included The Ron James Show, Degrassi, Stephen Leacock's Sunshine Sketches of a Small Town, which, in which she starred with her husband, actor Colin Mockery. And now, a little bit about Colin. Colin is an alumnus of Toronto's famed Second City Comedy Troupe. After nine years as a regular on the British Improvisation Series, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Colin became a regular on the American version, hosted by Drew Carey, which ran for six years and which is now being rebooted on the CW network. Colin was a cast member of CBC's This Hour Has 22 Minutes from 2001 until 2003. Colin and Deb produced, wrote, and starred in the CBC show Getting Along Famously. We are so fortunate to have Deb and Colin with us today. Please welcome our very special hosts to the stage. to be here. I uh, uh, went to public school in Scarborough and five years of high school, so definitely it was my formative years. Yeah, I just married into it. Yes, <laughs> it has nothing to do with it at all. No, no. But um, we're both very proud. We've been doing this uh, since the beginning. Yeah, 20... No, 2006. Two, 2006. I just turned 21. Yes. Um, yes, he had. It was going very well. Yeah. You must look good. No one's laughing. Um, <laughs> it's now time to start the formal portion of our program, the, pre <laughs> the presentation that turns our inductees into stars. To present our first inductee is Neil Joshi. Dean of Student Experience and Well-Being at UTSC. Uh, good afternoon, inductees, honored chair, uh, Scarborough Walk of Fame committee chair and committee and community. They prepared notes for me, but um, I got to tell you, I had to pinch myself this morning when I came through. I debated whether I could wear sneakers to this event, but as a Scarborough, we would say mandem. Um, you got to represent. These sneakers are from this mall. And now I have the honor of raising my two kids. They were born here in Scarborough as well. Um, and for a kid who grew up first in Galloway at 4100 Lawrence and then at 3190 in the TCH community, to be the dean of one of the world's top universities, is it could only happen in a place here like Scarborough. And then 
I would be remiss to say uh, if I couldn't give it a shout out. Like I had to pinch myself because I'm like, oh man, that's Ron Nelson. That's DJ X. That's Dwayne Morgan. And then like on the RT, like on an RT on a Saturday, he'd be riding like all the way from here downtown and you'd be listening to Dwayne Morgan and like you'd be looking at when when Brothers Speak would come out. And then I want to ask this gentleman just to, to stand up here. Duro the Third, stand up, my man. We talked about roses. Duro the Third is one of the most inspiring graffiti artists around the world, and he's here, born and raised here in Scarborough. So just a shout out to see you here. Um, again, I'm going to forget my notes because I'm just so happy to be in this space. Uh, we used to, like, as kids, you know, we would be frowned upon coming from this part of the city, and then just to see, like, what Larry said, we would inside call it Starbro, and what Dwayne Morgan said is it's roses. So I'm gonna ask you just to indulge me for a second. My kids couldn't come here, and they were so excited to know that I'd be here today. So I just wanna take a selfie with the audience. I'm gonna ask you one question. I'm gonna ask you, which place in Canada has the most roses? And you're gonna say? Okay. Well, we're gonna do it louder, because we're from the East End, right? So bear with me for one moment. All right, we're gonna try it at the count of three. Which place in Canada has the most roses? <laughs> so in my notes here, and Craig mentioned it, Centennial College, the University of Toronto Scarborough, we do see ourselves as anchor institutions, but I gotta be real with you. To the STC executive team here, if you were a kid who grew up in Scarborough, I would argue that the Scarborough Town Center was an anchor institution. This was a place of culture. It's a place of community. And a place like Scarborough, it's where we came to find each other and do a lot. And when I bring my kids in here, uh, just a few weeks ago, ago, like to see the stars here, to see like Randall, Dwayne Morgan, to see the Black Enterprise Shop, STC, you guys are doing it right. You're bringing a sense of belonging in a real authentic way. So I just want to thank you for doing that. And obviously we know we're here, we're here because we're excited to honor the inductees here today. And I really like how Dwayne Morgan talked about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Having worked downtown on Bay Street for a bit, whenever we would find each other from Scarborough, we had a certain way of speaking to one another. Because we didn't see a lot of ourselves downtown on Bay Street. But we would always help each other and we'd always try and help each other elevate. So I think today's inductees are a great example of people, as Dwayne Morgan said, who are capable of doing extraordinary things, and then more, more importantly, that the audience here, the young leaders, see themselves as people who will walk with honor, walk with integrity, uh, walk with the pride that we have here from the East End of the city. Um, so I just wanna take a moment to thank uh, every one of the inductees um, for being of service to this community, and then I just wanna turn everyone's attention to the screen here, uh, and please join me in welcoming our inductee, Jerry D, to the stage. Whether it's his stand-up comedy or much-loved television shows like Mr. D, his personal director, producer, writer, I think we get it. That's great. I didn't approve that picture. That was a joke. We were uh, getting pictures. That's how my daughter's take pictures with one foot up, so I was kind of making fun of them. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Colin and Deb. What a treat uh, to have you here. Uh, legends in, in my industry, uh, two of the nicest people in our industry. Um, so I'm always, always great to see them and appreciate the, 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 the path they blazed for a lot of us in entertainment. Um, Scarborough for me, I was, I was born in Scarborough, uh, Scarborough, Scarborough General Hospital. December 31st, 20 minutes before midnight, uh, with two teeth. I was born with two teeth. A lot of people, I might be the only person here from Scarborough born with two teeth. I have a telegram. My father sent a telegram back home to Scotland uh, where they emigrated from to tell the family there that uh, I was born with two teeth. So I have the worst birthday uh, in the history of sports. 
Uh, my mother could not hang on for 20 more minutes. Uh, otherwise, I, would, uh, I had a great hockey birthday, as a lot of people know, or sports birthday. Um, but my parents, you know, fitting that I was, we were brought in here with bagpipes. Uh, that's my favorite instrument. Uh, my parents, my brother and sister, were born in Scotland. They emigrated here. Um, so I, re I really didn't have a lot of say in, in where we, we landed. We landed in Scarborough on Shepherd Avenue East. Um, we then moved uh, when I was about three to uh, Shepherd Avenue East further down because it's such a peaceful street to live on. I guess they wanted to keep that theme going. But I ended up coaching a lot of hockey. I, I was at Scarborough Gardens many, many nights co coaching the Wexford Raiders. So Scarborough to me has always meant a lot of things. I'm very proud to say I was born in Scarborough. Uh, I never say I was born in Toronto because I wasn't. Uh, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of what you are proud of being from here. Uh, this, this city to me represents humility and hard work, which is what my parents always preached to us. So um, this is a, a, a recognition of them, my brother and sister who came here first. Uh, and I, I got a little taste of it when I was little, but for the rest of my life, I, I'm always very proud to say uh, this is where I was born. This is where my family got settled. And uh, I'm proud of all the things that the people in my industry, uh, like Deb, who spent a lot of time here, uh, that, that are also from here. So it's great to be uh, inducted with so many great people today. Congrats to our, to our, young, our young people there that just got inducted. What a, what a tremendous honor for them and such a bright future. Thank you to my wife uh, and my parents. Jerry, of course, one of our greatest silent comedians. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, to introduce our second inductee, please welcome a brand new uh, Walk of Fame sponsor this year, Dolph de Young, President and CEO of the Toronto Zoo. everyone it's our pleasure to be here and uh, it's an honor as the CEO of your Toronto Zoo to recognize a really exceptional individual so many of you have zoo stories think back what was your first visit like mine grade three saw my first Sumatran tiger was with my French immersion class and my mom ate a McDonald's ice cream cone Part of my journey, falling in love with nature, and one that I never thought would end up where it has today. And I think it has a lot in common with the story for Dr. Andrew Lentini, a man who 35 years ago started as a camp counselor, found his way through the zoo, and literally is responsible for certain species of wild animals, such as Blanding's turtles, still being found in our community.
So 10 years ago, working with other partners like the University of Toronto Scarborough, Parks Canada, TRCA, we counted seven of those individuals in the Rouge Valley. Since that time, thanks to people like Andrew's leadership and vision, we've reintroduced almost 500. We're talking about a legacy for future generations. And in a day when we're talking about roses from concrete, we're talking about a champion who made sure the green will be there for generations to come. That kind of caring is not something that Andrew restricted to animals, be they Blanding's turtle, wood turtles, Puerto Rican crested toads, Massasauga rattlesnakes, all animals native to our province that will have a brighter future thanks to him. He also cared deeply about people, including receiving calls in the middle of the night when anti-venom was needed, when somebody was bitten, always being there for his team and rising to the role of Senior Director of Wildlife and Conservation and setting your zoo up for the next 50 years. So with that, I'm so proud to be here today with you, to be recognizing you and your contributions and an exceptional human. So congratulations, Andrew. Thank you all for, uh, for the recognition today, uh, the Scarborough Walk of Fame. Andrew Lentini has turned his passion for wildlife into a 35-year career at the zoo, where he started as the very first zoo camp counselor. He was zookeeper for a number of years and spent the majority of time working with reptiles and amphibians. He reintroduced landing turtles into the local community, and he was part of a team that bred the critically endangered crested toad at the Toronto Zoo, which were later released in Puerto Rico. As Dr. Lentini once said, nature is not something that exists outside of humanity. We are a part of it and rely on the biodiversity that exists on this planet to ensure that we have a healthy ecosystem that will sustain all of us. We cannot survive outside of a healthy ecosystem. He is celebrated for leading conservation programs and for the critical protection of species at the Toronto Zoo. The Scarborough Walk of Fame is proud to induct Dr. Andrew Lentini. Okay, well, thank you again. Um, thank you to the Scarborough Walk of Fame Committee uh, for recognizing our contribution to the conservation and protection of threatened species. Um, this is an incredible honor that I share with the entire team at your Toronto Zoo who are dedicated um, and, and work every day and volunteer every day to make life better for the animals in our care. Scarborough has been my community for more than 50 years. My parents came to Canada as immigrants, and as a boy I was immersed in the Scarborough community. I remember the opening of the Scarborough Civic Center with Queen Elizabeth II uh, there, and I remember the opening of the Scarborough Town Center and how excited we all were with the new cinemas, uh, to name a few things. Uh, the following year was the first time I got to go to the Metro Toronto Zoo when it opened in 1974. And as a teenager, I spent uh, a lot of my time in Scarborough. I walked by uh, the, the house of the mayor of Scarborough, Gus Harris, on my way to Neil McNeil High School every day. And uh, during those years, I volunteered in the community as well. I spent time at Providence Villa, Providence Health Center now, uh, the West Scarborough Boys and Girls Club, and uh, with Scouts Canada at Ellesmere Staten Public School just down the road. Um, I want to thank, take this opportunity to thank my then girlfriend and fortunately now uh, my dear wife for starting me on my journey at the Toronto Zoo. Um, as has been mentioned before, uh, it was 1986 um, and Carla had heard uh, a news piece on this brand new program called Zoo Camp at the zoo and thought I should apply for a job. I did that, and uh, it's been 35 years, and it led to a 35-year career uh, during which I had the pleasure and privilege of working with and then leading um, a team of people committed to serving the Scarborough community uh, as not only um, a great anchor tourist attraction here, uh, but as an inclusive organization and a premier zoo and conservation center uh, recovering threatened species and advancing animal welfare. 
Um, I thank the many conservation champions I've known and, and gotten to work with over the years. Uh, I met one of them at the very beginning of my career, and that was Bob Johnson, and he was your Toronto Zoo's very first curator of amphibians and reptiles. And throughout my career, I was able to contribute to some of the projects he started uh, through the amphibian interest group back in the 1990s, and that led to our award-winning Adopt a Pond program, which still serves local schools today, and to our First Nations program, Turtle Water and Conservation. Um, I have worked on several international projects, but um, as you can see from that, I'm particularly proud of the work we've done with the Blanding's Turtles. Um, I want to really thank the City of Toronto, uh, Deputy Mayor Thompson, uh, Councillors Paul Ainsley, and uh, Jennifer McKelvey, and, um, and Cynthia Lai on our board uh, for all their support through the years. I also want to uh, really thank our provincial and federal governments for supporting these really important local conservation and recovery actions that we take here in the community. Uh, towards the end of my career, I had the great pleasure of working with our new CEO, Dolph Young. Uh, Dolph is a committed educator, conservationist, and really a dedicated leader. And Dolph, I want to thank you for your bold leadership um, that continues to drive the zoo forward as it evolves to meet the uh, ever-increasing challenges that our natural world is facing. Thank you. And I'm, I'm really confident that under your stewardship, the Toronto Zoo will continue to play a, a really vital role in Scarborough's economic, cultural, and, and environmental future. Um, again, I'm truly grateful and humbled by this great honor, and thank all of you, my friends, my family, um, for being here today to share this. It is really my hope that this star will inspire others to appreciate Scarborough's natural heritage, and I invite all of you to join me in supporting your Toronto Zoo in its mission of connecting people, animals, and conservation science to fight extinction. Thank you very much. so much more important than I actually am. And that's never a bad thing, is it? Uh, before I do my next introduction, I'd like to give a shout out to all the folks that are watching us uh, on the streaming uh, service. I hope you're as proud uh, and impressed by these inductees as we are. This year at the Scarborough Walk of Fame, we've seen a number of new partners join us. So to introduce our next inductee, is another new partner, Matrix Mortgage, represented by CEO Sean Allen. Good afternoon, everyone, and um, it's an honor for me to be here today. Um, my name is Carla Allen, and I'm actually the managing mortgage broker at Matrix Mortgage Global. Uh, we are a Scarborough-based company, started in Scarborough by uh, Sean, my husband, who's also a Scarborough native. And uh, I personally grew up here, came here when I was 12 years old from Jamaica, went to school here, and was always at this mall. So. I feel very honored to be able to be here today to uh, introduce and even to talk about the, um, the Hall of Fame, Walk of Fame, sorry, inductees. So my most sincere commendations to you all on your inducti inductation this year. Um, I believe it's always an honor to be recognized, uh, but to be recognized in your hometown will always hold a special place for anyone who deserves it. Um, a Scarborough native, Natalie Spooner has been collecting accolades since childhood. From her humble beginnings in her parents' backyard 
to being named Athlete of the Year four years in a row at her alumni Cedar Break Collegiate, Natalie has gone on to make our country proud as a four-time Olympic medalist, which includes three goals and eight world championships. In addition to being a finalist on The Amazing Race Canada, she's also given back to her community in many ways, but most notably her Natalie Spooner High Performance Hockey Academy, where she works with budding hockey greats to help them hone their skills. I am indeed, again, privileged to be able to present uh, this honor to Natalie Spooner. Natalie Spooner, sports. Scarborough-born Natalie Spooner has been a member of Canada's national hockey team since 2007. Spooner is the first player to compete for the national women's team, the national women's under-22 team, and the national women's under-18 team. Natalie, a forward, has three gold medals and a silver in Olympic competition, including a gold in the 2022 Beijing Games. She has two gold among her eight world championship medals, including gold at Canada's memorable victory in 2021 while on home soil. Natalie expanded her competitive footprint with a second place finish in the Amazing Race Canada, teamed with Canadian hockey teammate Megan Mickelson and appeared on Battle of the Blades teamed with figure skater Andrew Poget. The Scarborough Walk of Fame is delighted to induct Natalie Spooner. Thank you so much to the Walk of Fame and thank you everyone for being here today and helping us celebrate. Um, I'm extremely grateful to have been chosen for this award. Um, thank you to Marg and every, all the volunteers, um, her committee that put this all on. I couldn't believe it as soon as I got out of my car, all the volunteers I saw directing me and making sure that this is going off so smooth. Um, thank you to all the partners that allow this to happen. Uh, we, you know, we wouldn't be here without you guys. Uh, and I feel so honored to be receiving this recognition along all these other inductees that are so inspiring in all different things, some that I have never heard of. I mean, the zoo, I went to the zoo as a kid, but to learn about all the people behind it, I think it's pretty amazing. First of all, where to start? Um, I'm still in awe that I'm up here receiving a star on the Walk of Fame. Uh, my parents moved to Canada over 40 years ago from England uh, and settled in Scarborough, and I can't imagine calling anywhere else home. Uh, they've been in the same house my whole life, and every time I travel or move for hockey, I know that whenever I come back, I can come back to Scarborough and come back home. Scarborough welcomed my family with open arms and gave us so many opportunities, a lot of those including sports. Growing up, I had three older brothers, uh, and I always wanted to be like them, following them, um, trying to keep up with them, but they always you know, pushed me and made sure that I was going to be the best athlete I could. Uh, I started playing hockey with the West Hill Golden Hawks in my local community and even played soccer for many years for Scarborough United. I always had such amazing experiences playing sports in Scarborough. Not only did I do hockey and soccer, but I was also able to do dance and gymnastics at my local community center. And I think in the end I ended up picking the right sport as I haven't seen many 5'10 gymnasts, but maybe one day. <laughs> uh, growing up, I went to school at William G. Miller uh, and I, I remember all the opportunities I, I had there to be active and to play sports. Uh, some of my favorite memories are the Brock Gordon at Thompson Park. I would be so nervous for those cross country meets, but you just go out there and run and have fun. Um, and always competing at Birchmount, that always felt like a really special day and like the biggest competition of life. Uh, then I went on to Joseph Brandt and eventually on to Cedar Bray for high school. I had so many amazing teachers while I was at Cedar Bray who helped me continue to play so many different sports, from swimming to badminton to field hockey and to our ice hockey team. And I remember our hockey team, we were a bunch of beginners, <laughs> um, but we had so much fun and there was many, many laughs had whenever we hit the ice. One of my favorite parts of going to school in Scarborough was the opportunity I had to take French immersion from kindergarten all the way until grade 12. And I have to say it's come in handy being on many bilingual hockey teams and also having to do the odd French interview. Scarborough gave me all the opportunities I needed to be successful, both academically and athletically. And I'm very thankful for that. Because of my academics and my athletics, I was able to go on a scholarship to The Ohio State University, 
where I was able to pursue my dream of playing for Team Canada while also getting my education. Having my dream come true of playing at the Olympics and winning a gold medal is one that I'll never forget. But it was made even better when I was able to come back home and share the medal with my community and with my family. Through sport, I found that I had a voice and I was able to help inspire the next generation of young girls and boys and also help push the sport of women's hockey forward, where we're still fighting to get a professional league, but hopefully one day we'll have that where, you know, these little girls can have the same dreams as little boys. I've got to travel and meet so many incredible people through sport, but it has also given me opportunities that I could have never imagined. Like the video showed, I was able to go on Amazing Race Canada, I was able to compete on Battle of the Blades, but also I was able to go on Jerry D's Family Feud, <laughs> which did not go so well, so hopefully he'll have us back. <laughs> I don't even think we played one game. Um, but lastly, I'd like to thank my parents, uh, Anne-Marie and Peter, who are here, my husband, Adam, uh, and my brothers, Rick, Doug, and Ian, um, that supported me along the way and pushed me to be where I am today. So thank you. I really wouldn't be here without all of you. And then thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm so proud to be from Scarborough. And now I'll be able to have a star that every time I come back to the mall, I'll be able to see um, and really be proud of. So thank you. We are so happy to welcome back um, a partner with an even bigger commitment, the Scarborough Health Network. Presenting the star for health and science, please welcome President and CEO, Alicia Vandermeer. Good afternoon, everyone. I am delighted to be here representing Scarborough Health Network and Scarborough Health Network Foundation. Uh, as you may know, Scarborough Health Network was formed in 2016 with the merger of the three hospitals in Scarborough. Uh, and a couple of years ago, as we were embarking on our $100 million campaign to raise money for the capital needs of our hospitals, we realized the people across the GTA didn't know anything about Scarborough Health Network and the great care that we provide in Scarborough. And so we decided we needed to launch a major public campaign called the Love Scarborough Campaign uh, to really celebrate the excellence. And we profiled a number of people uh, in, Scar in Scarborough, leaders in healthcare, leaders in our community, uh, because we really wanted to share with all of Toronto the incredible excellence and contributions that happen here in Scarborough. And so we're so aligned with uh, the values of our partner anchor institutions and with the Scarborough Walk of Fame in celebrating excellence. And I am delighted to be here today to introduce our next inductee, uh, Paul Colfort. And uh, we have a video that we're going to share and uh, congratulations to Paul. Dr. Paul Colfort, Health and Science best known for his advocacy and health service to undocumented immigrants, Dr. Paul Colford is a family doctor in Scarborough. He was the chief of medicine and was the community services director at the Scarborough Hospital when the SARS epidemic hit Canada in 2003, and a respected critic of the healthcare system's inability to deal with the pandemic. More than 40,000 patient visits have been made to the Canadian Centre for Refugee and Immigrant Healthcare which he co-founded with nurse Jennifer Dandrade. Cawford is also an assistant professor at the University of Toronto's Department of Family and Community Medicine. The community of Scarborough is proud to induct Dr. Paul Cawford into the Scarborough Walk of Fame.
Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for that introduction. I only have six minutes of my first five to talk to you, so I'm going to try to get through this. But before I do, I want to thank a very special person in our audience, my wife. Her name is Marta, and she has been there every second of the way on this journey. Thank you. So in 1999, what we saw shocked us in Scarborough. We saw migrant, forced migrant, persons out of war, out of difficulty, refugees, parents with children in their arms who were ill, going to the hospital emergency room for care and being turned away because they didn't have an OHIP card yet. And they had no money, as most refugees don't, to pay for their care. We called it back then the no-hip problem, and we still do, sadly, today. I have something to say, but it's on behalf and it's being a voice for those who are unable to speak here or speak at all for fear of retribution and their immigration process and hearings. I want to give a shout out and a thank you to our team of volunteer physicians and nurses and community members. These are physicians and nurses inside borders, Canada's borders. And people will wonder why we would need to have a volunteer clinic or volunteer clinics in Canada where we have a universal health system. And the reason is because in Scarborough alone, there are tens and tens of thousands of people living and working here, working on the front lines in COVID, in healthcare, some of them, many of them undocument, undocumented and medically uninsured and unable to get care when they are ill. We think this is a national disgrace. It occurs across our nation, not just in Scarborough. We think everyone needs to be part of the solution. Scarborough is a, one of the finest places to work. I've worked here for all of my medical career for f over 40 years. I've lived here. Um, Scarborough has a health inequity problem not of its own making. It has a health poverty problem. And what we did by complete accident because it stumbled upon us was to create a medical food bank kind of thing. That's what it is. And that's because of all of the volunteers who stepped forward. Scarborough has, has two community health centers. Central Toronto has 20. Does that seem right? I don't want to get too preachy, but does that seem right? We have the highest immigration newcomer numbers than any part of this city. One of our wards in Scarborough has 90% of its people born outside this country in this generation. Nowhere else in this city. You know, you probably know some of these individuals. They'll serve you a coffee. They'll put a roof on your house, fall off. Won't be able to go into the same emerge you go into when they're injured. And they'll clean your clothes. It just dawned on us a long time ago that if it was their job to get themselves out of hell and harm's way in this world, that their children here, then when they got here, it was our job to treat them. And if there was no center or clinic to do that, it was our job to build one. 
And that's what our volunteers have done. Mark said, be positive for a minute. So here I go. 15,000 visits for this population during the three years of COVID. 33,000 vaccines delivered by our center to undocumented workers, refugees, and others who were afraid to step forward. Advising the provincial vaccine table on the best ways to get this done. 140,000 care visits since 1999. And in 2021, our team, those volunteers, supported the delivery to over 300 COVID babies in newcomers. presenter this morning uh, is also a new supporter of the Scarborough Walk of Fame is Tropicana Community Services. Please welcome Tropicana Executive Director Raymond Eust. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Scarborough Walk of Fame Chair, Board, Organizing Committee. It's my pleasure to be here uh, this afternoon representing Tropicana Community Services Organization. And it's a privilege to be a sponsor and presenter today at this year's uh, presentation ceremony. Um, in 1980, uh, right here in Scarborough, Dr. Robert K. Brown and Derek McLennan founded the first culturally appropriate counseling program for black youth. And it was the very first program of its kind. It uh, has grown over the last 42 years uh, to become a multi-service, multi-site agency uh, headed and uh, headquartered right here in, in Scarborough. Uh, it's become the largest black-led and serving human services charity in Canada delivering daycare services, youth development, employment, food, and clothing security programming to Scarborough uh, residents. Now, this history is relevant uh, because right around the same time, a Scarborough native and resident founded his own kind of counseling and mental health program for black youth. <laughs> that man was Ron Nelson. Ron. And he launched his program. <laughs> he launched his program. Uh, I call it a mental health program for black youth from the radio station at the then Ryerson Polytechnical Institute. And right then, back in the uh, early 80s in the GTA, where a generation of black youth were struggling as Dwayne mentioned to Bloom, where we weren't always uh, welcome. He launched the Fantastic Voyage radio program featuring music and entertainers who looked like me, who looked like many of us here uh, today. And Ron, I tuned in every Saturday because this man touched my own personal life, right? This is a personal connection. I tuned in every Saturday for that for that program, me and my buddies and our set, and your music shaped 
the lives of a generation of black youth who needed to see and hear themselves, to hear music and entertainment that resonated within us. You were one of the only places, you were the, one of the, the premier pioneering programs that brought that music into Canada, into Toronto. And it was a source of healing and motivation and pride for a group of us who, who grew up here in the GTA, that because of your pioneering effort. I snuck out of my mother and father's house, Ron, <laughs> to come to, 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 to Master Jam events and whatever you were putting on, to see Run DMC, to see uh, Will Smith or whoever what you were bringing to town. I snuck out of my house and yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So Ron, it's my great pleasure, my great pleasure to uh, honor you today and present you with this award. Uh, would you please join me on stage? Ron Nelson, entertainment. Ronald Nelson is a visionary and leader who's played a critical role in popularizing hip hop, reggae, and dancehall music in Canada. In 1983, he created Fantastic Voyage, Canada's first hip-hop radio show. Ron brought Canada's first major rap concert, featuring Run DMC and others, and with proceeds from that show, built Canada's first hip-hop recording studio in the basement of his Scarborough home. Bursting with creativity, Ron will release his first album, entitled 40 Years Too Late, in September 2022. His first single, Rap Music, was released in June. The Scarborough Walk of Fame is delighted to induct Ron Nelson. Ron Nelson. Thanks. Um, <laughs> it's a great honor. Yes, I see all my people in the house. Big up. People on the balconies. It's like concert hall, you know, the second yeah. level there. <laughs> I better stick to my speech because time goes by fast, as we know. Um, thanks for the iPhone. I didn't need to write anything down. But uh, first of all, thank you for the great honor. Absolutely. Thank you for the flowers. This moment means a lot to me to be up here with all these great movers and shakers. It's an amazing feeling, and I'm sure that Every inductee feels the same way. We are saying thank you to the organizers and presenters and whoever voted for us to be here. We don't know those people, but we say thank you very much for getting our foot in the door and recognizing what we did. So congratulations to all the nominees. Uh, when I think of Scarborough, you know, I think of high school and Scarborough Bluffs and what it meant if you had a car and you could park there late at night, you know. Um, I think, of, I think of Scarborough Roller Palace, for anybody who's old school, you might remember that, um, for real. But it took me taking an Uber, not actually driving Uber, and working downtown for me to realize how Scarborough is stigmatized, because downtown people, Scarborough's like a foreign place to them. They're like, Scarborough? No, I've never been there. I don't want to go there, right, you know? So we have our own pride here, and we love ourselves, our Scarborough people. This is where a lot of us grew up, and we're loyal to this area. Um, I called my boys King Turbo a minute ago and I said, yo, God, I have to make a speech, man. So this is what uh, King Turbo sent me. They said, big up Markham and Eglinton, big up Palmer Court, big up Malvern, big up Cataraki, big up Galloway, big up Glendower, big up Chester Lee, <laughs> big up Mornell, Tuxedo Court, Pitfield, Wayside, Bay Mills, Danzing, Orton Park, Cliffside, Eppleworth, you know, these are all, sometimes we call them the ghetto areas of Scarborough. I don't like using that word, but this is where a lot of us black people grew up in Scarborough and are proud to represent. This is where we're from, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, for some of you who are unfamiliar, I stand here because of my, I suppose, trailblazing work and stuff like that in radio broadcasting, mostly I wouldn't be here unless it was uh, for the great radio station CKLN, which is no longer. That's, that's what made me, made us, made DJ X out there as well. You know, and the concert promotions. I've brought groups here like Heavy D, Salt and Pepper, Ice T, Ice Cube, Public Enemy, Bismarcky, Boogie Down Productions. You know, the list goes on, et cetera, et cetera. But it was 1983 
when I first applied at Ryerson, I got a job at CKLN, and that became history because, you know, the Fantastic Voyage was formed. It was like the first, it, it wasn't initially a hip-hop show, but it became hip-hop and funk, and uh, there wasn't a lot of black people playing music on the radio at the time. Sunshine Crew and a whole bunch of crews were out there on the streets, but uh, because I got into the university, I was able to take all that stuff from the streets and put it onto the radio. Little did I know that it would become, you know, a, a framework basically for setting the blueprint for the hip hop scene, not just in Toronto, but in all of Canada. That, that's why I'm here. And later on, uh, Reggae Mania, try to do the same thing with reggae and dancehall like I did with hip hop. But again, it's hard to do that with reggae. You can't perfect it. Now, my parents, they're here, by the way. I want to say thank you, my mom and dad. A lot of special people here for, for me today, and I want to say thanks to all of them, but they bought a house at Brimley and Steeles, and in 1983, I had to take one and a half hour bus ride to get to Ryerson every single day, and I'd have my big reel-to-reel -reel recorder in my hand that I rented so I could edit when nobody else really knew about editing. So, you know, I'm Scarborough bound, I love Scarborough, and I just want to big up all my Scarborough people, like I said. Um, being in Toronto and Canada again, um, I brought up a lot of artists from the States because it was like a, a dead world here for hip hop. You guys may not remember it, but there was no hip hop scene once upon a time. And we didn't actually understand what was going on until CKLN came around and then we had a place to gather under one umbrella and kind of understood what was going on. So my role was now to popularize all the talent that I saw and that meant bringing up American artists and having them battle against some of our top Canadian artists, you know, just to give our own scene a little bit of profile. So 40 years later, literally, um, I get credit now. Now, I got a lot of hate back then, right? But I get credit now for having the imagination and the will to play our part and for creating the blueprint. They say, Two Root is here somewhere. He's been putting it in my head that, Ron, man, without you, man, there'd be no Drake, man. There'd be no Cardinal official, man. You're the one that started. If it, you know, we would have been a cook or a chef or something. We wouldn't be in music, you know? So it's because of your work and your dedication, why, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to say thanks for all the people who stood behind me during all that time. DJ X is in the house. Where is he? Right over there. X is like my best friend, man. You know, for years we've survived and uh, just want to say thanks to all the support. Uh, Rob, Rob has been the one protecting me for my entire career. He's always been my head of security and he said I gotta be here. You know what I mean? Uh, Lisa West, when I did Regamania, you know, she's over there. She became my partner in crime as well. So thank you very much for your great work. Um, almost finished. Uh, big up King Turbo crew as well. Like I said, they're part of the whole Scarborough feeling to me. And they taught me a lot about Scarborough and understanding all of the semantics that come with Scarborough. Uh, Lorraine Gordon, thanks for the empowerment as well. They're here somewhere. <laughs> and of course, Denna, thank you very much for the love. Jemay, my son, is in the house too. I'm trying to teach him everything. So big up, Jemay. Love you very much. Uh, my mom and dad believed in me, though. I couldn't have done this all without the family support. You know, they went and, and, and got money from the bank so that I could put on that Run DMC show with Public Enemy. And at the end of that show, I think I lost like $20,000 in one night, but it was the first uh, international concert tour that ever came to Canada. I wanted to do it. The following week, I played a concert hall. I made $20,000 back, so it had a good story in the end. Uh, I'd like to thank Ray Williams, who's not here, for uh, giving me my professorship at York University, where I taught a hip-hop course for 11 years. Thank you for that. And Mark Campbell, who's not here, Dr. Campbell, uh, for basically rebranding me and making me recognize the value of my contributions. I can't thank everyone, but again, Mark and Larry, the whole committee from the Scarborough Walk of Fame, I want to say thanks for the uh, induction, and we recognize that when a lot of us were making history, we were just doing what we loved, okay? We were pioneering, but we didn't know that we were pioneering. So to have that recognized now, like I said, 40 years later is a very, very great honor. I wanna big up all my Scarborough people. You know in Scarborough, we've got our own distinct vibe, our own flavor. We move different than the rest of the GTA, and we often get stigmatized by the media. But guess what now, we've got a lot of great talent that come from here, and I say congratulations to them all. And last but not least, 
I want to thank God for life because next year hip hop turns 50. Sunday, I'll be turning 60. Now, this is another milestone for me because every one of us here to some capacity has lost people we love either because of COVID, because of cancer, disease, misfortune, maybe even gun violence. We hear about it every day on the news. So it's good to be a survivor and to still be here standing on this earth making a contribution. And I will tell everyone, the last little plug here, that I'll be releasing my first album at 60 years old. It's called 40 Years Too Late. <laughs> it's going to be out in a couple of weeks from now. Look up DJ Ron Nelson on Spotify, Apple Music. Check me out because in the history of rap, people don't care about what six-year-old MCs have to say. It's going to be your first time listening, you know what I mean? And I don't talk like 16-year-olds. I don't have the experience of 19, 20-year-olds. So listen to what an adult has to say with a rap album. That should be very interesting. And uh, just check me out at DJ Ron Nelson. So finally, congratulations again to everyone receiving their stars. And um, I love you, Scarborough. Thanks to the Walk of Fame people. And it's good to get your star and your flowers when you're alive instead of when you're dead. Okay? Yeah. A little 16, 17 year old kid came to my crib one day and interviewed me. And that's what he said after the interview. You know, it's good to talk to people like you when you're alive because, you know, it's better anyway. <laughs> anyway, that's it, people. I just want to say thank you. And uh, hopefully, some of you young people out there, seeing us up here receiving these awards will give you the inspiration to believe that despite the obstacles that you might face in your life, just believe in your dreams. You can really do anything that you want. And thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. stars and uh, in the meantime while they're coming up I want to say that it's truly remarkable what the people of Scarborough can accomplish and I'm sure you'll agree with me that we are grateful to all these people for being great ambassadors for Scarborough around the corner here for the uh, unveiling of the, uh, our inductee stars. Please just make your way around.
All right, we are going to do maybe the most exciting part. The stars are going to unveil their very own stars. Could we bring up Jerry D to unveil his star? Congratulations, Jerry. Congratulations. And join us later today when we show the director's cut of Jerry's induction video. It's going to be very exciting. Um, now uh, we're going to um, unveil Dr. Andrew Lentini. Congratulations. Our next star to unveil is Natalie Spooner. Congratulations, Natalie. And now, Dr. Paul Colford. Congratulations. And last but not least, Ron Nielsen. Nelson. Uh, please welcome Brian De Silva. Thank you. Good morning and welcome. I'm Ryan De Silva and I'm the general manager of Scarborough Town Center. The Scarborough Walk of Fame is a very meaningful event for STC and it's an incredible opportunity to recognize the impact the achievements and contributions of all of our Scarborough honorees. STC is the heart of Scarborough and it makes perfect sense that we honor our outstanding community members in a place where their families, friends, neighbors, colleagues, teammates and fans can all see their stars shine. Today's celebration marks the return to a renewed Scarborough Walk of Fame ceremony for the newest inductees and the very special rising stars in our community. It's been a number of years since the last in-person ceremony and we are so glad to be able to host this celebration which is fully accessible and without barriers for all residents. 
and it's also being live streamed to Scarborough and beyond, which is also a first for the Walk of Fame. This year, we're pleased to be unveiling a new digital pillar to showcase our inductees today and for years to come. The Scarborough Walk of Fame is an integral part of the shopping center and our city. As we are here and we connect millions of people from the community who walk through our shopping center every single day with inspiring leaders who help make the region great and allow Scarborough to shine. Thank you all for joining us here today, and I'd like to present our new digital pillar. Uh, now we're going to have a group shot, and just a reminder, there's another induction at 2 o'clock, so please join us for that, and congratulations to all of our worthy recipients.
my star you know so I'm immortalized now you, know, you can just snap to that picture of the star later so I just want to say thanks to everyone man it's been a lot of years been a lot of time and it's nice to be appreciated after all this time a lot of people growing up right now because back in those days you used to get a lot of hate a lot of fight a lot of this a lot of that you know black people be fighting against each other not getting along now this is 2022 we have progressed and we're running ish right now as you can see we're in the money we're in athlete we're in we're in we're in all the professional sports and we're doing very well and we've all kind of uplifted ourselves as a people so all my black people this award especially for you do it baby do it you can do it you can do anything you want one love <laughs> yeah. hey what's up girl what touring no just I'm free. Yeah, it's great. It's, uh, it has I know. I recognize. Really, uh, I recognize. So, to be out and Make sure you get a picture of the stars. It's such a great honor. Uh, it means a lot. You can come in. You can come in. Gordon. I thought you weren't going to make it today. Because you had some work to do. You had some work. My family emigrated from Scotland, so they came to Scotland. My brother, sister, mother, father, all of them there. And they came here, and then they had 
Have you met Gordon, by the way? Yeah, uh, uh, it's been born in Scarborough. It, it's such a treat to be here and recognized for that. But I think of them, I think of the family as a whole. Sorry. There's a lot of history for <laughs> in my family. And the fact that my kids can you know, come to the mall here now and uh, see their dad's star is pretty cool for me. And I, I think we'll have yes, that stage. Yes, Mom, yes. Uh -oh, this sorry. Is like, uh, something you expected in return. No. When, my, uh, when I got the call, I, I don't even know what it's about, but I, uh, I was very flattered to say the least. But, uh, you know, you do your job, you do your Video. career, you don't even know if you're not paying attention uh, where you're from, what you're doing, and they did. And uh, it's I'm great to be uh, conducted with so many other great people.
actually see the star, it's kind of crazy, you know, growing up in Scarborough and walking around the world now to have my name on a star that we can see and walk by, it's pretty crazy to know that all the other inductees and how, you know, the impact that they've had on Scarborough, the world we inducted them, uh, it's really amazing. What's it like kind of uh, being back in reality again after the reality? live out my dream and, you know, play a game for my job, I guess, so it's, it's good. I, you know, I enjoy it every day and, and, like, receiving something like this is just so special. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really significant, you know, growing up in Scarborough and going to school and, you know, obviously growing up and everything you did and your community and how they supported you, your family, uh, your friends. Uh, and it just makes you really grateful to be from Scarborough and uh, feel to be back here.
that little turn on it. And um, I can say it's a blessing to still be here in this building doing what we do. I studied also. It was a total surprise when they come out and I grew. What? What? What are you talking about? How did I get here? I don't even know who nominated me or anything like that. But he said I made the cut. And I'm like, okay, cool. Tell me what you need. Because, like I said um, in my speech, you know, when you get older, um, there's a whole uh, uh, ageism issue in our, in our society. Right? So people are basically ready to write you off. The young people, they want to come up, they want to take over. Like, so it's good to get your flowers when you're alive and healthy. You can still be here appreciated. You can still. You can still communicate uh, with people who are showing you the love and talk to them because, like I said, one of the most beautiful things about being in my position right now is knowing that I've touched a lot of people's lives because whenever I go out and walk through the mall, I might be with my son or anything, but people will come over to me and I won't know them. I'll think, oh, is this guy going to look like me or something? And he, you know, he's like, yo, Ron, man. I'm like, yeah? He goes, I just want to say thank you, man, for all that. And he puts a big smile on his face, and he wants to introduce his kid to me and say, this is Ron Nelson from the 80s, and you don't know it, but he's this and he's that. It's the greatest feeling in the world, because like I said, when you were there back yes, then, you did what you did because of the love. And now those young kids, that were 14, 15, 16, they've grown up now, they become adults with their own kids, and they have a whole different perspective on what life's all about. So they can appreciate the work now. Even though they were, even though they were a consumer of the work, they can appreciate it more. But as they've grown up, that's funny. Sure, if somebody works hard and cares about to grow the people, understand how you know, you can be unselfish and, and hard work and you know, give love to the uh, scene, like nothing bad. Um, I basically, what's the word, um, I wanted to help everybody that I saw that had talent and I put them first. It's only now when I'm older I'm starting to put myself first. When I see talent I get excited about it. So when I saw rap for the first time and saw kids on the street in Scarborough and in Toronto trying to rap, you know, it didn't matter if they were very good at the time. If you went to the parties, the difference between now and then is that anybody who picked up the mic in 1983, 84, 85, starting from 79, the, the party would stop and there'd be a big circle around them. And after they're finished, everybody would clap. And then they would go back to the dancing, you know? So I'm one of those people that I kind of, I, I feed off people's energy and I feed off their talent and there's a lot of talent in Scarborough, there's a lot of talent in Toronto and I'd rather not pay my part for that talent. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for showing up. Okay? Respect for that. All right. All right. Bless up. Yo.
but I'm here. I'm nice. Oh, this is my turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
This worked really great. Okay, so they use. This worked really great. No real problems. This thing, I don't know what that's doing in there. I think this is. Oh, is that? Uh, oh, is that the stream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's too All right. All right. That's right. Um, just keep trying all these lily things that keep coming.
Good afternoon and welcome to the Scarborough Walk of Fame ceremony. I'm Fianna Cohen, the marketing manager at Scarborough Town Center, and I'm delighted to welcome our inductees and rising stars, their guests, and everyone who is here today to celebrate the accomplishments of our Scarborough community. I would like to begin by acknowledging the indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. We take this moment to acknowledge the importance of the land that we each call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local indigenous peoples and their cultures. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuits, Métis, and First Nations people that call this nation home. Please join me in a moment of reflection to acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past and to consider how we can each in our own way move forward in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. STC has an important role in connecting people throughout our community. It connects the people of Scarborough to culture, dining, entertainment, and of course, shopping. But more than that, it's where our community flourishes. We're very pleased to be the permanent location for the Scarborough Walk of Fame. And today's inductees are shining examples of community members who have made and continue to make exceptional contributions to the, to the community. So congratulations to our 2022 inductees and rising stars. On that note, I'd like to introduce Larry Watmore, president of the Scarborough Community Renewal Organization, known as Scroll in the community, to share more about today's celebration. Thank you, Vienna, and uh, welcome, everyone. The, um, the Scarborough Community Renewal Organization is proud to be the producer of the Scarborough Walk of Fame. Having taken over last year from the founding board of the Scarborough Walk of Fame, which since 2006 has done an exceptional job of nurturing and growing this event into one of Scarborough's signature programs. In fact, we often like to call this the Scarborough Walk of Fame, because that seems to fit the kind of profile and the kind of celebration that we seek to do here today. SCRO is an organization of passionate and committed Scarborough volunteer leaders who work collectively with our community partners, business organizations, resident associations, and public institutions to build a better Scarborough. We are so fortunate to be able to live, work, learn, and play right here in Scarborough because good things are happening here. And that's because we have so many inspiring people who do great work here in Scarborough to improve the quality of life in our community. Now, some of those inspiring people leave here and go on to become ambassadors for Scarborough on the world stage. We're here today to celebrate Scarborough leaders in both of those circles. And thanks to the many partners and sponsors that we have supporting us today, we're able to do this celebration and this event with a really sort of classy feel to it as befits the occasion. So we're very grateful to our partners and sponsors to make this possible. I'm going to do a, a few thank yous at the um, after party at Centennial College later this afternoon, but there's one thank you that I want to do now, and that's to the almost 60 volunteers that we have here from Centennial College 
who have been taking care of all the game day logistics, if you will. Under the uh, guidance of Centennial College faculty members, to whom we're very grateful, to make sure that this event works so seamlessly. So thank you to all of our Centennial College volunteers for that. And now, I would like to, it's my pleasure to introduce Toronto Mayor John Tory. Born in Toronto, Mayor Tory has spent his life giving back to the city he loves through his tireless work in the public, private, and philanthropic roles. Elected the 65th Mayor of Toronto in 2014 and re-elected in 2018, Mayor Tory's goal is to make the city more livable, affordable, and functional. Mayor Tory's been a tremendous friend to Scarborough, visits here often, including the annual Mayor's Luncheon at the Scarborough Business Association, which was held very recently and which was felt like a real coming out for Scarborough's community of leaders coming back together for the first time since 2018, and it was great to have the Mayor in attendance for that. So Mayor Tory, thank you for making the time to join us today, and I'll turn it over to you for a few words. importantly honorees and you're here to see them and to honor them and not to hear too much uh, from me but I just want to say this I um, th th this job is a great privilege and one of the great greatest parts of the privilege is that you get to know all parts of the city not just the part where I happen to grow up in North York but I've got to know Scarborough really well and I've got to know that Scarborough when you get to know it well has been historically underappreciated it's been underinvested um, and that applies to things like uh, transit and to health care very tangible things uh, that just haven't been here, but we're fixing that. The Scarborough subway, as you know, is actually under construction, finally under construction. Uh, the hospitals, you know, the Scarborough Health Network looks after 750,000 people, and they have fantastic people in there. People in the healthcare business here are being uh, honored today, but they just didn't have the buildings that were up to the same kind of standard that uh, rightly had been expected in other parts of the city. And they've been running a great campaign, which I've been trying to help them with, uh, to remedy that. And they've uh, taken, taken on the whole question of Scarborough and how it has been underappreciated over the years. But you know, there never was a problem with people. That was never the problem. And whether you look at people from the past, and by that I mean the immediate past who are being honored today, some of them are, you know, very much most of them a factor in the present of Scarborough or the future through the rising stars. Um, Scarborough has punched way above its weight in terms of the kinds of people that it has produced, who in many cases have become you know, known way beyond the borders of the city of Toronto in fields, whether it be sports or healthcare or finance or uh, entertainment. And they're here uh, being honored today. And I think that's just because the people who come out of Scarborough are authentic. Scarborough itself is authentic. It's down to earth. Um, it's good, uh, solid people who are welcoming, who are diverse, who are focused on the community. And I think that's one of the reasons why you see so many people coming out of this part of the city that have risen to such heights in so many different areas who are being honored here today. And so I'll just say to them, congratulations to them all. Congratulations and thank you to Scarborough uh, Renews for the fact that they initiated this and they keep doing it year after year so we can be reminded of the people uh, who make up Scarborough, the people who have accomplished so much in Scarborough, and how they epitomize and represent, the word ambassador was used earlier on, they epitomize and represent the values that are Toronto values, that we welcome and embrace everybody, that we nurture everybody, that Scarborough, the place of probably the greatest diversity in all of Toronto, has proven that when you support each other, when you take differences and make them a cause for celebration, not division or concern, that you can make two and two uh, worth much more than five. And I think that is exactly what has happened here. Now, you'll forgive me because there's a lot of special people here, um, but I do want to make sure that I acknowledge one of my former colleagues. And I tell you, if there's one guy who deserves the credit for the fact there's going to be a Scarborough subway, and it's actually under construction, it's Glenn DeBearmaker. And he's, he's one... He's one of many people being honored today, but I just wanted to acknowledge that because he served with me at City Hall and he did push that subway and make sure that happened. And that's going to be a great thing for, it's going to stop right here, and it's going to be a great thing for everybody who lives here. Congratulations to all the honorees. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mary Tori. It was great, great to have you here today, and thank you for staying. Uh, as it was great to have Deputy Mayor Michael Thompson and Councillor Jennifer McKelvey with us this morning. So we're very grateful to have the uh, dedicated support of the city and support of this signature Scarborough event that we're all so very proud of. It's now my honor to introduce Dwayne Morgan, born and raised in Scarborough and a spoken word artist Dwayne has received the African Canadian Achievement Award, the Harry Jerome Award, and is a Canadian Urban Music Award recipient. Dwayne has published numerous books and is a 2013 Scarborough Walk of Fame inductee. Dwayne's uh, work has taken him across Canada, the US, Jamaica, Turkey, Trinidad, Bermuda, Barbados, Ghana, and many other places. Uh, Dwayne's emphasis on quality has driven his success, has made him a well-respected component of Toronto's urban music community and the North, and the North American and global uh, spoken word scenes as well. And I'd ask, um, invite Dwayne to come up and take the stage. Thank you for that introduction, uh, Larry. It is a great honor to be here this afternoon. Uh, there are, you know, friends, colleagues, people I admire who are being inducted today, and it's such a, a great moment to be able to share uh, with them. As was said by Larry, 10 years ago, I was sitting there uh, getting ready to have my star unveiled. So uh, welcome to the, the family, to all of y'all being inducted uh, right now. Uh, as a member of the Walk of Fame committee, I was asked to create uh, two poems to share uh, this afternoon that kind of spoke to Scarborough and, and what this place is. So here we go. Tupac Shakur once wrote of the rose that grew from concrete. Imagine having the audacity to grow where you are unwanted, to bloom in conditions not conducive to your success to show off your beauty against the perceptions of your ugliness, forcing people to stop and take notice of your petals, not just your thorns. It wasn't that long ago, but there was a time when people shied away from saying that they were from Scarborough. But then, we were amalgamated into the megacity, our charm almost stolen. We became a forgotten part of Toronto, even though we were its backbone. Eventually, we realized our uniqueness and identity. We realized that we were roses, growing through the cracks in the concrete, with the audacity to claim a place misunderstood by those on the outside. While we began wearing Scarborough pride like name brand designs, live it, wear it, we used our light to illuminate the Hollywood sign, to shine in business, radio, the TV, to grow up from the roots, empowering community, inspiring people to rise. We shine, no matter what others have to say. We are the roses that grow from concrete, and this is the Scarborough way. No one woke up one day with today as their dream, deciding to put themselves out there and overachieve so that they'd be given a star for everyone else to see. This was nobody's purpose, but through commitment to purpose, they are here. Regular people who grew up in the neighborhoods that we live in, went to the same schools that we went to, ordinary people who have done extraordinary things with the hope of inspiring other ordinary people to do the same, to live a life where their names are remembered because we all have dreams, some buried deeply beneath pain and life experiences. But I pray that today, 
serves as a reminder of what can happen when your dreams become your reality. None of our inductees are any more special than the rest of us here, but they all dared to dream. They woke up every day with the belief that they mattered, that they could make a difference, that they could inspire others, and the hope is that you see their stars, hear their stories, and say to yourself, if they can, I can too. Despite what you might see on social media or hear in the news, Scarborough has exceptionally deep roots, which also include you. And we need to keep branching out. So congratulations to each and every one of this year's inductees. Thank you for your Scarborough pride, your contributions, and everything that you've done. May today serve as an inspiration for those Scarborough talents whose stars are yet to come. Thank you. Thanks, Dwayne. Uh, before we get into the, uh, the, uh, the, the recognition and the introduction of our inductees, there's one more person that I really need to take a few minutes to recognize this afternoon, and that's Marg Middleton. Now, Marg is I'm sure known to many of you, uh, many of us, as uh, a tireless community volunteer. And in fact, Marg has been the beating heart of the Scarborough Walk of Fame program since 2008, and has been hugely instrumental in nurturing the success and the profile and the prestige of this program since that time. We in the Scarborough Community Renewal Organization have been blessed to have Marg work with us not only on our board, but as the chair of the Scarborough Walk of Fame committee, working with a high-performing group of uh, volunteers to make all this happen today, um, but also giving an enormous amount of her own time, passion, energy, expertise to make all this possible, and we at SCRO are very grateful for that. Now, those of you who will know Marg know that her passion for Scarborough and commitment to community service goes well beyond this. Um, since retiring as general manager of Metroland Media and uh, the Scarborough Mirror uh, some years ago, Marg has, has devoted an enormous amount of time to serving the Scarborough community for which she is so passionate. And we are very grateful for that service. The Scarborough Business Association is very grateful for Marg's work. Marg was the founding president of the Scarborough Business Association. And of course, the Scarborough Health Network has been a huge beneficiary of the talents and passion that Marg has brought to her volunteer service there. We've, been, we've all benefited greatly, even those of you who don't know her well. I can tell you Marg has been the guiding light of this event for many, many years, and we're very fortunate to have Marg um, with us here today. Marg is in the, in the house today. She didn't want to be part of the on-stage program, but she has asked Dwayne, so I'm going to ask Dwayne to come back on stage once again, to speak on her behalf. And what better choice, if you're going to have somebody speak on your behalf, than to ask Dwayne Morgan to do so. So Dwayne, back to you. Uh, thanks again, uh, Larry. So, Marg has uh, written these notes that I will share with you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a very special day. It is a time when we all come together to honor Scarborough and the special people who have contributed to make it a wonderful place to live, work, and play. The Scarborough Walk of Fame has three goals. To recognize achievement, to celebrate community, and to inspire tomorrow's leaders. As chair, there are countless people I need to thank. We are so happy to welcome back by popular demand, Deborah McGrath and Colin Mockery. They have been with us since the beginning and never say no 
They give freely of their time and help to make this day special. We are also grateful to Scarborough community who are working diligently to get funding that will help us ensure the Scarborough Walk of Fame remains with us in perpetuity. We engaged so many new partners this year with a total of 18 who supported financially and allowed us to create this exciting day. The members of the Scarborough Walk of Fame event committee for the many hours of hard work and for their incredible dedication to making this event happen. I would also like to thank the nominating committee for all their time and effort. I said I would make the job choosing inductees hard this year and they had to whittle down a total of 150 nominations to the 10 that we are inducting today. Scarborough has so much talent, it was a daunting task. We were fortunate to have a group of Centennial College student volunteers who helped with many tasks, including researching the nominees. This year's event is the first time that there is no gala, and so all of Scarborough and beyond are able to join us today or are able to watch live or online. We approached so many people with a simple request, can you help? and were overwhelmed with the support we received pro bono or in kind. Scarborough rallied behind the Walk of Fame, and today you see what community can achieve. There are three people who really are the backbone of today's event. First of all, Betty Carr, who in 2006 said, let's create a Scarborough Walk of Fame, and then engage partners to get involved. Thanks to her vision, at the end of the day today, we will have 66 stars recognized on the Walk of Fame in eight categories. We were unable to do an event in 2020 because of COVID, but that didn't stop us from doing two ceremonies today. It really is exciting to walk among the stars and see the digital display and take pride in our Scarborough stars. Two all of other volunteers stepped up to the plate, Bob Dallas and Peter Haggard. Every time I asked them, they made the dream a reality. They have worked endlessly on all aspects of the program, and I personally send you my heartfelt thanks and love. We really couldn't have done it without you. Lastly, to our new stars and rising stars, thank you for helping us achieve our goals. We have worked extremely hard to make this a special day for you and hope you can file in your memory and draw on it often. We know without a doubt from past experience that you will continue to support Scarborough so all of Toronto knows what a wonderful place this is. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Duane. In my excitement to recognize uh, Marg, I skipped over one part of the program, so I'm going to back up just a little bit right now with my apologies to Margaret Hurd. I'd like to uh, invite Margaret Hurd um, to the stage. Margaret is the Vice President Operations and Development at Park Property Management, and Park Property Management is our wonderful celestial partner for today's event. Um, and greetings coming from Mark, so thanks. inviting us to be a part of this amazing event. I am Margaret Hurd, Senior Vice President of Operations and Development at Park Property Management. Park Property Management was formed in 1975 to manage the real estate holdings, primarily residential and rental apartment buildings for a family who had been investing in the Greater Toronto Area since 1961. At that time, most of the buildings were in Scarborough, long before the township was amalgamated into the City of Toronto. Its geographic size, location near employment lands, highways, transit, and of course, the beautiful cliffs of Scarborough Bluffs made it an ideal place to invest. We have grown since those early beginnings and now manage 93 purpose-built rental buildings. 15 of these, almost 20% of our company's total holdings are in Scarborough. The first acquisition was in 1964 near the corner of Grimley and St. Clair, and our last was purchased in 1986 in Guildwood Village. 
We believe that our Scarborough buildings are home to more than 6,000 residents, and it is therefore our duty and privilege to support this community. We believe in the vitality of Scarborough so much that we are currently constructing two apartment buildings containing 303 suites at the northwest corner of Pharmacy and Finch. 10% of those units will be considered affordable. And we are very proud of that. Added to that, we are also in various stages of development of six more rental buildings in the Greater Toronto Area. We truly consider Scarborough to be a perfect place to live out your dreams, while enjoying the dynamics of downtown life without having to actually go downtown. And what more can you ask for? Scarborough has the Toronto Zoo and Rouge River Park within its borders. And for those of you who live in the South End, the R.C. Harris filtration plant that those of us who grew up in the area always referred to as the waterworks. Added to the locational importance is the cultural diversity of Scarborough, from farmers markets, community events, and cultural festivals. Scarborough is where it's at. When our president, Gerd Wengler, who is a member of the North Scarborough Rotary Club, mentioned partnering with Scarborough Walk of Fame, I said, we must do it. Having grown up in Scarborough myself, and after marrying, our first house was in Scarborough. And doing most of my shopping in Scarborough, and yes, much of it here in Scarborough Town Centre. It was a perfect fit, not only for Park's dedication to the area, but for me as well. For the first time I saw the Walk of Fame, I was so very impressed. What a great way to celebrate the tremendous, inspiring, talented residents, or should I say, emissaries of Scarborough. The wonderful leaders, innovators, celebrities, and up-and-comers, the rising stars. Each time I walk by the center court of the mall, it thrills me to see all the amazing names. Many I recognize, and the few I don't, I search on Google to see what amazing accomplishments they have achieved. It's also so great to see the young children who drag their parents around the stars, reading names and who knows, dreaming that their name will one day be emblazoned in the Scarborough Walk of Fame. It is truly our honour to be this year's Celestial Partner. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. It's great to see such a successful Scarborough-based business with deep roots in Scarborough step up the way that Park Property Management has to help to contribute to the success of this day. And we're very grateful for your support, so thank you for that. Now, shall we move on to some recognition of our inductees? It's time for our first recognition, and I'd like to call Frank Demetto, General Manager of Road Sport, to the stage to present our Rising Star Awards. Frank. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Frank Demento, and I represent the Road Sport Auto Group. With two of our locations here in Scarborough, Road Sport Honda and Road Sport Chrysler, our auto group has always been a great supporter of the Scarborough community for the past 50 years, including Ribfest, Hospital Charities, Rotary Club, Police Associations, and most recent, with Scarborough Walk of Fame inductee Maestro Fresh West at his back to school book launch, just to name a few. However, the Scarborough Walk of Fame is one of our larger commitments, as it gives profiles to people who should be known and stories that should be told. We can't, we can't stress enough how important our community commitment is and how proud we are to be a partner of the Scarborough Walk of Fame. It is great, with great pleasure for us to present awards to two rising stars today. Our first rising star is Asia Farman Khan, graduated from Western University's class of 2022 with an honors specialization bachelor degree in health science and with, disti with distinction as a Western scholar. She has spent most of her life in Scarborough. She is a part-time poet, and has had poems published in anthologies, magazines, and online publications. Her debut, her debut collection of poems is titled Zamana, The Time and the World, which she wrote under her pseudonym, Anna Goldzar. She has spent much time volunteering at her local mosque, the Islamic Foundation of Toronto. For over 10 years, she has helped distribute meals during Ramadan, 
the founder of My Heart, a volunteer not-for-profit organization dedicated to spreading creativity and using the arts to help others. Aisha has worked in hospitals and homeless shelters to engage more people in the creative process. Congratulations, Aisha. me to receive this award but this isn't just my award this award is for everyone that I work for this award is for the people of Scarborough I spent most of my life here and I can say that you can take the girl out of Scarborough but you can't take the Scarborough out of the girl this award is for my beloved community it's for those that volunteer alongside me it's for those that who I see persevere without any recognition. It's for the youth that stand with me and who do more than just their civic duty. We are a generation committed to the betterment of ourselves, those around us, and our communities at large. And I am so thankful to stand up here today and be honored with you. I want to thank my parents and my family for instilling the value of the community in my heart. I want to thank my friends for always inspiring me to do more good in whatever capacity that I can. I want to thank my best friends for sticking around me when I feel like a falling star more than a rising one. I want to thank those who came out today and every single one of you cheering me on from home or in the crowd. I couldn't have done any of this without any of your support. Thank you so much. And I one last thank you to the organizers of today this, none of this would have been possible without the sponsors or without the volunteers, so I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so next we have Katem O'Connor, was born May 16, 2000, and grew up in Scarborough. He is of Ugandan and Trinidadian descent. He started acting and modeling at the age of 10 with the support of his family. He has been featured in TV shows including Degrassi, LA Complex, Stephen King's 11-22-63, Raising Ep Expectations, The Expanse, and a reoccurring role as Adam Parker on Canada's largest longest-running series, Heartland. Ketim attended high school at Wexford College, where he was allowed to perform and build his craft in front of large audiences while juggling his TV career. After years of hard work, Ketim now has over 400,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. Congratulations, Ketim. How's everyone doing? Uh, my name's Katam, and uh, I'm fairly nervous right now, but it's okay. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, but yeah, so first things first, I want to thank the committee for giving me the award. I'm not only honored, even more than that, I'm motivated to remain confident on my path and do my best effort to lead by inspiration as much as I can. Next, I want to I want to thank my parents. Uh, I want to thank my support system in general, my family and friends, but most importantly, my mom and dad, who put in the best effort to instill the confidence in my instinct to trust my heart and follow my passion, and even going as far as investing in me and putting me in the right environments to better help my craft and letting me pick myself up when I needed to. 
My dad was my first motivational speaker before I even understood the concept of motivation. He, I would, he would send me out into the world feeling confident and empowered before I even understood what empowerment was, giving me messages like, I'm destined for greatness. My mom made the decision to um, invest in me when, uh, when really, she, she, all the odds were in my favor. It, it, it's like there's more possibilities of the path I, t path I took not going right as opposed to getting any benefit in, in general. But she decided to take that risk, and that's the reason I'm here today. I want to thank Scarborough for giving me a community to be proud to represent every single step of the way. And I could go on and on. The best part about this journey is knowing that I'm, I'm not alone, and that's what Scarborough does. Is you can find your people everywhere here. It's just such a diverse community. You can, I have my people. I could go on and on about how much I love Scarborough, but I only got five minutes. So, but being a part of this community is enough, but being recognized is beyond measure for me. And all I want to say is thank you so much for believing in, believing in me. I appreciate that, um, and I will do my best effort to make you proud. You haven't seen anything yet. Trust me. Thank you, Frank. Congratulations, Aisha. Congratulations, Katayam. Great job, both. And now, I'd like to introduce a couple of very special presenters. Our celebrated hosts today, Deb McGrath and Colin Mockery, who have given their time to the Scarborough Walk of Fame for many years. These two great Canadian talents bring a wealth of experience to our stage, and we are grateful to them for their grace, their professionalism, and their generosity. Deborah is a proud Scarborough girl, born and raised. Deb graduated from Ryerson University, now Toronto Metropolitan University, for theater, and then joined the famed Second City. Working extensively in television, film, and theater, Deb has enjoyed a successful and rewarding career in the world of voice, doing everything from commercials and animation to being the voice of winners. Deb has won two Canadian Comedy Awards, and in 2009, there's a recurring theme here, folks, was inducted into the Scarborough Walk of Fame. After six years as the mayor in Little Mosque on the Prairie, Deb's recent gigs have included The Ron James Show, Degrassi, Stephen Leacock's Sunshine Sketches of a Small Town, in which she starred with her husband, actor Colin Mockery. So, now a little bit about Colin. Colin is an alumnus of Toronto's famous Second City comedy troupe. 
After nine years as a regular on the British Improvisation Series, Whose Line Is It Anyway? He became a regular on the American version hosted by Drew Carey, which ran for six years and is now being rebooted on the CW network. Colin was a cast member of the CBC's This Hour Has 22 Minutes from 2001 to 2003. Colin and Deb produced, wrote, and starred in the CBC show Getting Along Famously. We are so fortunate to have Deborah and Colin with us today. Please welcome our very special hosts to the stage. Scarborough. We are thrilled to be back. We've been here since year one, not year one of the planet, but 2006, and we are honored. We're so happy every time we get the request to do it again. Absolutely, and I'm very happy the committee didn't fire me for going gray. Um, no, that was good. Thank you. That, that was, was good. Hard-hitting satire. Well said. Um, congratulations um, to all the honorees, and congratulations to um, our two rising stars. Um, Well-spoken, uh, lovely young people. We still consider ourselves rising stars. Yes. It's just we're closer to the ceiling. <laughs> we're junior, senior rising stars. <laughs> anyway, um, it is time to begin. Can you folks hear me? Oh, okay. Oh, good. Thank you. I love the enthusiasm. It's now time to begin the formal uh, portion of our program, the presentation that turns our inductees into stars. To present the first inductee, here once again is Margaret Hurd of Park Property Management. once again for inviting us to be a part of today's amazing event. I, on behalf of Park, am so thrilled to be here. I'd go through all the other stuff, but you only heard that five minutes ago, so I'm going to go right into this. <laughs> Today, I get the esteemed pleasure of presenting Lily Singh with her star on the... Yay! <laughs> uh, uh, her star on the Scarborough Walk of Fame. And boy, does she epitomize what this distinction represents. An entertainer, actress, producer, creator, and author, all of this at the age of 33. I already knew who Lily Singh was from her YouTube channel and late night talk show, which makes all of this the more thrilling for me. But wow, you've done so much. And to top it off, you are absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> And, of course, I bragged about today's event to my kids, to my family, to my colleagues, my neighbours, and anyone who would listen. So, because of this, I'm a star too. <laughs> so, without further ado, it is my absolute pleasure to present Lily Singh with her star on the Scarborough Walk of Fame. Born Lily Singh is an entertainer, actress, producer, creator, and number one New York Times best-selling author. Upcoming, Singh will lead the new Disney Plus comedy series, The Muppets Mayhem. Earlier this year, she starred in the DreamWorks animation comedy, The Bad Guys, which recorded a global box office of over $230 million. She is a judge on Canada's Got Talent. Singh's Unicorn Island Productions is developing projects across film and television. As part of their mission, she launched Lily's Library, a book club to spotlight South Asian stories for everyone. Lily is a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador, where she's advocated for gender equity globally. The community of Scarborough is delighted to induct Lily Singh into the Scarborough Walk of Fame.
too. Thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Um, I won't be too long. I have a few things I want to say because I'm not going to lie. I'm low-key fangirling over this. I'm nerding out over this. Um, I got to say, I've been blessed and privileged to have done a lot of really cool things in my life, but this day is definitely one of the most meaningful things I've ever done. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I appreciate it so much. You know, no matter where my career takes me, I've never forgotten where home is. And if you know anything about me, you know that not only am I a proud Canadian, but I'm also proudly from Toronto, and specifically from Scarborough. I try to scream it from the rooftops. <laughs> and that's because I truly know that the best parts of me exist because I am from here. Now, being raised in Scarborough is why I have an appreciation for so many cultures. It's why I was able to connect with people from all over the world, because I see the world in my city. It's why I have impeccable taste in music, right? It's why I'm proficient in soca, dancehall, chutney, pangra, Bollywood, Ghana. <laughs> it's why I was the captain of a pangra team for so many years. It's why I know, and I want everyone, if, if you could hear me in LA, it's why I know what good food tastes like. <laughs> it's why I crave Jamaican patties and kota roti. I see your sign asking me on a kota roti date. If, if there's any way to do it, it's that way. I'll tell you right now. It's why also people don't push me too hard because they know even though I'm nice and polite, deep down, I can and will go Scarborough on them. If you know, you know. Now this mall specifically holds so many memories for me. I think it's been eight to 10 years since I've been here. In high school, there was nothing cooler than hopping on the TTC after class or during class, my bad mom and dad, and going to STC. You know, the first time I balled out was in the Le Chateau that was here. Yes, shout out Le Chateau. You know, every polo that I wore under another polo was from This American Eagle in 2014. Now, and don't even get me started on the annual Old Navy flip-flop sale, y'all. That should have been a national holiday. Now, I love this city so much, and I couldn't be more proud to be from here. It's why I have a 416 tattoo on my neck. It's why I literally named my dog Scarborough, who's going to be here today to unveil my star. <laughs> and it is why when I'm in LA, no matter which game I go to, I'm repping my Raptors jersey, no matter what anyone says to me. Okay? But this honor wouldn't be possible without a few people that I want to quickly thank. I want to thank my mom and dad who are right there so everyone look at them and make them feel weird. Thank you for giving birth to me in the greatest city ever. And even though we moved to Markham, I know, I know, in my last year of high school, they drove me to Scarborough every day, every day. Shout outs, Lester B. Pearson. Shout outs. I want to thank my friends and family who are here today who should all probably definitely be at work. <laughs> Look at that. Even as an adult, you're skipping school and going to SEC. Look at that. She's literally a doctor, and she's here. It's 2 p.m., so real friends, real friends. <laughs> I want to thank the organizers of this event. Thank you for thinking me worthy of a star. It is a huge honor to me, so thank you to the volunteers as well, donating their time. Round of applause for them as well. And I do want to thank all of my fans, especially my Canadian ones, because you've been so ride or die for me. So thank you to all my, I see you with the Team Super hat as well. Thank you to all my fans. Uh, thank you for this honor, it means a lot. I promise no matter where I go, I'll let everyone know I'm from Scarborough. And in conclusion, just Scarborough ting since time, G. Congratulations, Lily. 
To introduce our second inductee, please welcome NetWin CEO Kula Salathirai. Good afternoon, friends. Thank you, Swaf. Thank you, Scro, for giving me this opportunity to present the award for an inductee. Before that, I thought of sharing my a story. 37 years ago, a young boy stepped foot on this Scarborough. He didn't understand, or he had little or no knowledge of the language or English. It was an unfamiliar weather country. The food wasn't familiar to him. He didn't have much money in his pocket, but he only had one good thing. People of Scarborough's warm, welcoming, and warm hearts. Because of that, for that 37 years, this boy was able to grow up in this city and open up a store, open up a co-working place for new business owners, young startup companies to create a co-working space. Those people are here. Many companies are succeeding through NetWin Place. Because of that, I have seen many, many, many young entrepreneurs are becoming millionaires. There are few millionaires already created since 2016. Not only that, NetWin Place is the home for SCRO, SWAF, and many other organizations in Scarborough. So I thank you. That boy is nobody no other than myself, guys. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, your support, to grow where I am. And today, I want to bring in a star in front of you, Sean Allen. It's been a pro proverbial rocket ride to the top for Scarborough-born CEO, Sean Allen. He has transformed the mortgage industry in short years with his company, Matrix Mortgage Global. With 610% growth over past 10 years and is the fastest growing mortgage brokerage in Canada, according to the Growth 500 list. His company is also a five-time winner of Broker of the Year, Broker of the Year at the Canadian Mortgage Awards. A tremendous advocate for the Scarborough community, he also operates the Matrix, Matrix Mortgage Crescent Foundation, Mat sorry, Matrix Mortgage Cares Foundation, and is active director of the Scarborough Business Association. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me welcoming Sean my Allen. dear friend, Sean yes. Allen. It's been a proverbial rocket ride to the top for Scarborough-born CEO, Sean Allen. He has transformed the mortgage industry in short years with his company, Matrix Mortgage Global. With 610% growth over the past 10 years, it is the fastest growing mortgage brokerage in Canada, according to the Growth 500 list. This company is also a five-time winner of the Brokerage of the Year at the Canadian Mortgage Awards. Sean is a tremendous advocate for the Scarborough community. He also operates the Matrix Mortgage Cares Foundation and is an active director of the Scarborough Business Association, which is dedicated to helping local business thrive. The community of Scarborough is proud to induct Sean Allen into the Scarborough Walk of Fame. Good afternoon. I don't know what to. I don't know where to start. This is after Lily's intro. It's like so hard to follow that act. It was crazy, all that energy. But um, thank you for this award and this recognition. Um, my parents, my father's over there. Uh, he came here following my mother in 1967. You know, she got here, and, and uh, that's when the Leafs won the, uh, the, the cup. 
And she, and she was like, I don't know what's going on. It's, uh, there's a party going on here. It's crazy. I don't understand what's happening. But, you know, in 1979, they gave birth to me. Born in Scarborough, raised in Scarborough. I actually just got b back from Atlanta, and I was out at a, at a gathering with my wife, and I had a shirt that said, Paris, Moscow, Scarborough, and London. And the guy said to me, you're from Toronto. I said, I'm from Malvern. I'm from Malvern. I'm also from Bay Mills. I'm also from Chester Lee. I'm also from Glendower. I'm also from Wayside, Block 13. I represent because I am Scarborough, through and through. I remember back in the day, I used to come here on Tuesdays. If you guys remember, you guys know, you guys know what Tuesdays was. They used to have a movie theater right here, and this mall was packed all over the place till they had to move the movie theater outside. But that's why the theater is where it is right now. I went to Mother Teresa, I went to Cedar Bray, I went to Pearson. I went to all these schools not because I was a bad student or I got kicked out of school or anything like that, but I wanted to really touch all parts of Scarborough and really embrace and meet people from different parts of the city. Now I have an amazing organization, Matrix Mortgage Global, which the head office is actually right across the street. And through that company, I'm able to employ over 120 people, a lot of them coming from Scarborough and giving them an opportunity to work where they wouldn't have had that opportunity to start their own mortgage business. In addition to that, we do a lot of community engagement through our not-for-profit organization, Matrix Cares, which gives people, a lot of youth, access to financial literacy, and we combine that with sports. We just had a, a great event at uh, BMO Field. We brought out 120 kids, brought them on the field. They brought the flag out. They got to stand with the players. And when the Raptors were on their 2019 championship run, I was going to all the games, and I was noticing that the ticket prices were just so high. A lot of people couldn't go to the games. A lot of families couldn't go, so what we did was we booked out the whole arena after the Raptors won the championship, and we put down the OVO court, and we had 300 kids come out to Scotiabank Arena on three days' notice to play basketball on the court. So I want to thank a, a few people, but most importantly, First and foremost, I want to thank Marg Middleton. Let's give her a round of applause. I know she's not feeling the greatest right now, but she put in a lot of effort to make sure that this kept moving. With COVID, we couldn't have the Scarborough Walk of Fame. I've worked with her in the Scarborough Business Association when she was starting that up. Um, you know, I've worked with her with SCRO, and I've worked with her on SWAF as well, so um, big thanks to Mark Middleton. Um, Scarborough Business Association, where I am a director, trying to get all the businesses in Scarborough the recognition and the notoriety that they deserve, because like many of the people that presented today and those presented earlier today said that Scarborough really gets a bad rap, but with the Scarborough Business Association bridging the gap and getting a lot of voices heard, you know, we got the mayor out here on several occasions. I've done a lot of work with the mayor, and it's through the Scarborough Business Association that I feel that Scarborough is getting a lot of that support, as well as the Scarborough Community Renewal Organization, and now the Scarborough Walk of Fame. I would like to thank all my friends, My friends at the top, my family have my kids here, 
my father's here, my mother couldn't be here, my wife, my cousin came from Ottawa, and all my uh, business and vendor partners, I have uh, my good friend Rich over there and uh, from Mortgage Center Canada, the best mortgage network in the country and a great partner, and Alto West, I have Justin here from Alto West, and my lawyer, where's Angelos? I see my lawyer right here, Spingo's Law, one of the best lawyers in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the country. I'm gonna give you the country. I don't know, you can take it. All right, so, thank you guys. I think I'll end it there. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Sean. This year has seen a number of new partners join the Scarborough Walk of Fame family, so to introduce the next inductee is another partner, Alterna Savings, represented by Fugina Ball, Regional Head, Member Experience, GTA. head for uh, member experience for Alterna Savings Credit Union. I am truly thrilled to be here to present one of this year's inductees to the Scarborough Walk of Fame. This is also a great week for us at Alterna Savings. We are celebrating our 114th birthday this week. <laughs> We've been providing financial services and advice to people of all ages of across Ontario for 114 years. And we've actually been proud to be part of the Scarborough community since 1956, where we initially started providing financial services to the Scarborough School Board and their teachers. And, when, and then we expanded that to include Scarborough Centenary Hospital and their front, dedicated frontline workers. We now serve any and all Ontarians and we're conveniently located in the fabulous Scarborough Town Centre, just down from the brand new LCBO. Come and pay us a visit. Alterna Savings has a long history of community involvement and a deep commitment to supporting and uplifting the communities we serve. We're passionate about making profits serve a purpose and empowering the change agents and community leaders in our local communities. We've been a sponsor of the Scarborough Walk of Fame since 2018 and are proud to share in honoring the, and celebrating the achievements of Scarborough citizens who have demonstrated excellence and sustained civic leadership. It is my pleasure to introduce a leader in the Scarborough community. Andrew Arifuzman is one of those community leaders making a real difference. He has been a pillar of the Scarborough community for over 25 years and has held leadership roles in some of Canada's most prestigious organizations in both the academic and healthcare sectors. Let's take a moment to learn a little bit more about Andrew's contributions. Andrew Ari Fuzzaman, Education. Over the past 25 years, Andrew Ari Fuzzaman has held progressively senior leadership roles across the academic and health sectors in some of Canada's most prestigious organizations. 
As Chief Administrative Officer at the University of Toronto Scarborough, he has spearheaded the development of the campus's strategic and master plans and brand strategy. Before joining the University of Toronto, he was a key leader in the merger to create the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health. Andrew is also active as a board member for Toronto Pan Am Sports Centre Inc., the Scarborough Walk of Fame, Ontario Shores, and serves as a strategic advisor for the Toronto Zoo and Youth Links. The community of Scarborough is proud to induct Andrew Arifuzaman into the Scarborough Walk of Fame. Please join me in congratulating Andrew. I am so jealous of some of the colleagues that actually were able to present before me, not only because how vibrant they are, but also the fact that they could do speeches from a cell phone, which is just really impressive. I've got very large font to try to avoid my reading glasses. Um, first off, one of the questions my daughter asked me is, why are you getting the same award as Lily Singh? <laughs> and I said, I have no idea, but Elizabeth, there's Lily and there's her puppy Scarborough sitting right there. Um, first off, I'd like to thank the Scarborough Walk of Fame Committee for selection. I'm both incredibly proud and was frankly very surprised with such an honour. Uh, I'd also like to celebrate and congratulate the other inductees from across today. There are so many amazing people in and from our uh, community in Scarborough doing amazing things here and around the world. And to be selected to the Walk of Fame is an incredible honour that's truly heartfelt. I moved to Scarborough on my 19th birthday. And, then, and since then, I've lived and thrived in the community. I met my wife, Karen, who's over there, here in Scarborough, um, and my two daughters, Elizabeth and Andrea, are raised here in Scarborough, and I couldn't think of a better place to do it. In my role uh, at the University of Toronto Scarborough, you know, we've rethought what universities can be. Education is not an end in and of itself, it's a means to explore and contribute to the world and to help society, um, to evolve, and to often, education has had too many barriers of entry for too many people. Ancient universities themselves were literally walled off from society um, to protect themselves from the hordes outside and to ensure that knowledge was the exclusive domain of the powerful. This is not how we think about universities anymore. Um, a university should be open, it should be engaging and welcoming to creating opportunities for the young and to the old, engaging in lifelong learning, places where people can be inspired to hone their passions. And we're now demonstrating that universities and colleges can be advocates and drivers of change by being part of the community and not just geographically located in a community. When I came to UTSC 15 years ago, um, from a senior role in the downtown core, everybody said, why are you going to Scarborough? Of all places, Scarborough? And I saw the opportunity because I knew the people. I knew what we could actually accomplish in this amazing community. And I knew that there was an opportunity to do something great on behalf and with the community. And so often on this journey, I've been told um, how our plans wouldn't work how it's only Scarborough, people don't, don't want to invest there. And we had this opportunity to build a Toronto Pan Am Sports Centre. The first meeting I went to, there was this amazing vision of this sports centre in Scarborough. And what did we hear? Well, at that meeting, we were literally laughed out of the room. Why would we ever build that in Scarborough? We said it was too complicated a partnership. City, high performance sport, and the university. It would be a white elephant and nobody would use it. High performance athletes wouldn't come out to the campus. And most offensively, from one of the, the leaders of Canadian sports said, we didn't need pools in Scarborough, we just needed basketball courts. And Councillor De Bearmaker was at that meeting, and that was the single most unifying meeting I've ever been to. Because at that point on, we said, we're going to do this, we're going to do it great. And in spite of all this, uh, we brought really great people together. We built a shared vision that we called from puddle to podium. We wanted the mom and tot swim class to be in the same pool as the Canadian Olympians. And we accomplished that. We built the project on time and on budget. And now, eight years later, with over a million visitors a year, 
Um, I'm most proud to say that that center was responsible for 76% of the medals that were won in the last Olympics. So hands up, Stargill. We're now taking this approach about partnerships and community to continue to build Scarborough. We have tremendous anchor partners where we work together on objectives and we're now working on the new Scarborough Medical Academy, a medical school that will be here um, in Scarborough, partnered with the Scarborough Health Network. We're building a new center for the arts here in Scarborough and we're actually taking a leadership role in environment and environmental technologies. All of these initiatives will not only create points of pride for our community, but will create places and spaces where our community can develop their passions and we, in, and we intend to become the economic drivers to help change and address some of our community shortfalls. All of our activities are built on world leading strengths. We're now at a place at the University of Toronto Scarborough where we hire people away from Harvard, Stanford, Yale who all want to be part of our community because they get what we're working through. Um, as much as I'm up here being honoured um, today, there are amazing people that have worked tirelessly to make these things happen and I wanted to acknowledge some of them. First off, my team at UTSC, some of whom are here today, um, are the most phenomenal people I've ever known, uh, who keep things moving forward and very often in difficult times and tremendous time pressures. The leadership teams, both within and outside um, the university, have embraced the little engine that could attitude. And we all regularly say, we think we can, we think we can, and we do. Our community partners who are so willing to stand up with us have no problem telling us when we've got something wrong and work with us to get everything right. And finally, my family and friends, many of whom are here today, my work too often has kept me away from home. And I wanted to thank you <clears throat> in understanding and your tolerance. And though nothing is perfect and things take time, we're working together and can make the seemingly impossible possible. Uh, and now people around the city and around the world are seeing Scarborough as the amazing place we've all known this to have been. Thank you so much for the amazing honour and recognition. I look forward to our continued journey together. Thank you very much. <laughs>
uh, you name it, like every type of uh, signage and also metal cladding, um, we do all that. Um, I like the word that um, Larry mentioned for star, uh, Starbow. Actually, four-way signs start from Scarborough, and that is where we located. Our facility is in uh, Midland and Shepherd. Uh, my president started this company 36 years ago. Started with uh, two men, and they, he always uh, told me he bring a letter with another man in the winter, go lock on the door, and that's how they start the business. And uh, business is tough, right, as you know, and as an immigrant from Hong Kong, uh, myself and my bosses and uh, many of our employees as well, we've been working so hard all these years. And so, as I said, they start with uh, two people um, at a 300 square feet facility. So now we have um, 70 people uh, at a 50,000 square feet facilities. And our business have expanded from Scarborough to all over Canada. Uh, with many national clients and uh, multi-billion business. So thanks to Scarborough for the diversity and the strong community support and network that if we have a lot of opportunities and growth starting from Scarborough. So we need more events like that to recognize all the rising stars, I think including ourselves. <laughs> and um, so today we're glad to meet uh, Mr. Glenn de the America. So please join us to welcome him, and we would like to, yeah. Glenn D. Bearmaker, community. Glenn D. Bearmaker's career has been stamped by a Scarborough home, pure and simple. This 15-year municipal councillor, who ended his service in 2018, after which he did not run again, was well known for driving to find solutions, large and small, for the residents of Ward 38. From splash parks, to tree planting, to off-leash dog parks, Glenn fought to employ the vision of his residents, of whom he was ever proud to represent. A committed environmentalist and advocate for animals, Glenn has advocated for, launched, and supported numerous projects related to these endeavors. He has served as Deputy Mayor, Toronto East, and Speaker of the Toronto Council. While he is no longer a city councillor, he continues to be a committed Scarborough resident and community advocate. The community of Scarborough is proud to induct Glenn D. Bearmaker into the Scarborough Walk of Fame. very thrilled to be here with this group of very amazing people. Uh, I'd certainly like to thank all the volunteers at the Scarborough Walk of Fame. I have been to every single ceremony since it started. I actually didn't think I would be getting a gold star, but I'm very happy to get a gold star. But it, uh, it's really brought out some spectacular people uh, that the world doesn't know about Scarborough. When you see these people, you really uh, are impressed. Um, I'd like to thank the, the mall, uh, Scarborough Town Center. Uh, my first, well not my first job, my first job was in a variety store, but when I was in high school, I got a job here in the mall at the Hudson's Bay Company. I went to the $2 Tuesdays. That's how old you can tell I am, because the movies back then were $2 a Tuesday, not $5 a Tuesday. Um, but we all came here, and that sort of unites us as, as a Scarborough family. Uh, I'd also like to thank my B31 family, that is here. Uh, the Honorable Pauline Browse, one of the best cabinet ministers Scarborough ever produced. Um, and of course, I have to mention my uh, thanks to my partner, Ramona Wall, uh, who has been with me for 30 years. And as my B31 family knows, she guides me, she points me in the direction, she gives me those orders, and I do exactly what she tells me. And so it's been a good 30 year relationship. Um, I'd like to acknowledge one of the past inductees who uh, has been recognized for her contributions to Scarborough uh, and to the world and let her family know that she is one of my personal heroes. Um, one of Scarborough stars is Cindy Nicholas, a personal friend of mine who was inducted into the Scarborough Walk of Fame in 2007 and who passed away too early in 2016. And if you ever saw Cindy, she was this sweet, quiet, 
charming, pleasant, bubbly person. Raised in Scarborough, always swam from, from being a little kid. And when she was 16 years old, she decided that she wanted to swim across Lake Ontario, uh, a feat that few human beings on this planet had ever managed to do. Many had tried, uh, but virtually everybody had failed to swim across Lake Ontario. I can't swim a length of a swimming pool without getting tired. Uh, but Cindy not only swam across Lake Ontario at 16, she did it in record-breaking time. A bionic woman. I always called her, we were friends, I always called her the bionic woman. Because this small, petite woman outperformed the best athletes on planet Earth and set world records from, Scar well, from being in Scarborough and going across the lake. And you would think, you know, we Scarborough people, I, I know because I'm looking at all of us and I know we're all overachievers, you'd think swimming across Lake Ontario a few times would be enough. But then she decided she wanted to swim across the English Channel. And as you know, the English Channel, it's part of an ocean. There's sharks in there. There's big eels that will come and attach themselves to you. Uh, it's not something that I would do. But Cindy Nicholas from Scarborough swam across the English Channel 19 times. And on five of those occasions, she decided to swim across the English Channel. Yes, you got to look at that map. It's part of an ocean. She swam from England to France and then back again on the same day. Took her 22 hours. This is beyond, uh, you know, they say they talk about uh, feats of strength. She was an incredible, incredible uh, woman, and you can see why I call her the bionic woman. But that's what we all do in Scarborough. We do, all of us, amazing things. We create things. We create amazing, amazing athletes, and I'm not one of those. We create amazing singers and musicians, and, and I'm not one of those. We create amazing comedians, uh, and, and I'm not one of those. And we create amazing educators, doctors, and business leaders, and I'm not one of those either. And certainly we create some amazingly smart people, and I'm not one of those, but we also create amazing people who love Scarborough, and I am certainly one of those. And I'm honored to be here today, and I just want to tell you very quickly sort of why I think I'm here. One of the reasons I think I'm here, because many of us who are being inducted today and in the past are so busy making Scarborough better, we don't really go around telling people what we do. Uh, in my case, when I was 26 years old, uh, a, a recent graduate of the University of Toronto Scarborough campus here, my friends and I wanted to stop the destruction of the Rouge Valley. And today you think, well, the Rouge National Park, of course, everybody loves it. Why would you want to harm it in any way? But 35 years ago, the idea of creating a national park in the largest city in Canada was just dismissed as a crazy idea. People said we were crazy. They dismissed us. They made fun of us. They were even mean to us. But we kept fighting to save the Rouge Valley. We met the best cabinet minister, minister Scarborough ever created, uh, Pauline Browse, who brought the Prime Minister of Canada to Scarborough. And some 35 years later, we have created the largest urban park on planet Earth, right here in Scarborough, all the way up to the Oak Ridges Moraine. I mean, who does that? People from Scarborough do that. Finally, I'd like to highlight, uh, as the mayor mentioned earlier, our fight to bring Toronto subway system to this very mall and up to uh, Shepherd and McCowan. This is the largest investment in Scarborough's history. And if you live here like we all do, uh, bringing a subway out to this shopping mall and up to Shepherd Avenue is a no-brainer. But let me tell you, uh, there were many, many, many people, most of them who didn't live in Scarborough and had probably never visited Scarborough, who tried to stop this simple subway extension. And many of us fought and fought and fought and fought to make sure that Scarborough got its fair share and to make sure that Scarborough came up to the shopping mall. And on 10 occasions, the anti-subway people tried to stop us. And on 10 occasions, we won the fight with the help of John Tory. And the subway is being built as we speak. So uh, I'd like to say, in, in closing, I look forward to doing many, many, many more projects to make Scarborough even better than it is today, 
and I look forward to working with all of you to make Scarborough the best place on the planet to live. Thank you. Congratulations. Wow, what a fabulous array of stars. Yeah, it's amazing just the passion and talent of, are you Scarberians, Scar Scarberites? Scarberian, when I was a kid. Yeah? Yeah. Is it still Scarberian? Am I that old? Yeah, it was Scarberian. Anyway, okay. Our next presenters are a tag team. We know about that, don't we, dear? Absolutely. We were wrestlers in the 70s. We were. Mixed doubles, different times. Yeah. Yeah. Me too put an end to that. We had to hang up our belts. We did. Yeah. Uh, we have some new partners to the Scarborough Walk of Fame. Uh, they are Hila Omar Kale, Vice President, Social Impact, the Daniels Corporation, and Kelly Martin, Manager Development, Design and Engineering, Choice Properties. Gonna tag team it for you. Thank you for tagging us in, Colin and Deborah. That was fantastic. And what a beautiful day in Scarborough. We are so thrilled to be here today. Thank you to the Scarborough Walk of Fame and the Scarborough Community Renewal Organization for gathering us all here together. My name is Hila Omar Kale, and I'm pleased to be here on behalf of the Daniels Corporation. Daniels is a GTA-based builder developer, and throughout our 38-year history, we've built more than 35,000 homes with a focus on building master-planned, mixed-income, multi-generational developments where the spirit of community shines brightly. And we see that here in Scarborough, certainly, today. For us, building means more than bricks and mortar. We see ourselves as community builders and as city builders because we leverage our business as a platform for meaningful impact. We look to integrate social impact and environmental sustainability in each of our communities. That's why Daniels is proud to partner with Choice Properties on the first phase of their 19-acre Golden Mile development at Victoria Park in Eglinton in Scarborough. Choice and Daniel share a deep commitment to being industry leaders in social, economic, and environmental sustainability. We're also honored to be supporting this year's Scarborough Walk of Fame to celebrate the contributions of Scarborough residents who have demonstrated leadership in the arts, culture, and society. Hey everyone. My name is Kelly Martin, and I am so grateful to be here on behalf of Choice Properties. Headquartered in Toronto, but with a national footprint of properties, Choice is Canada's largest real estate investment trust, with a commitment to building healthy, resilient, mixed-use communities. We are thrilled to embark on the redevelopment in the Golden Mile with a partner like Daniels who share our core values. We've long recognized the importance of the Golden Mile in the Scarborough as an opportunity to make significant impact, but with a much broader aspiration to positively influence the area for generations today and tomorrow. As part of our first phase, we'll be building a community innovation district designed to foster the exchange of ideas between residents, financial and post-secondary institutions, and community organizations. As we build new communities, we're paying as much attention to the social infrastructure as we are to the civil. 
It is through this work that we've had the opportunity to meet some incredible leaders from the Scarborough community, one of them being Randell Ajay. <laughs> Randell exemplifies resilience. A proud Scarborough native who has overcome adversity, Randell uses his experiences and talents to uplift and inspire others in his community and beyond. He has held titles including author, arts educator, inspirational speaker, founder, Randall Torontonian Ajay. of the year, and local hero, among many others. In 2021, he was named Ontario's first poet laureate. <laughs> In this role, Randell has shown great tenacity in driving social change through the use of his words. This man oozes charisma and eloquence, ever present in the poems and artistry that he has generously shared with the world. In this position, Randell has helped galvanize poets ac across the province, helped countless youth find themselves through their creative voice, and helped infuse introspective arts into formal and informal teachings for so many. We are so looking forward to continued relationship building with Randell and Scarborough at large to help celebrate its diverse community fabric and the weavers like Randell who helped to enhance it. We understand that artists like Randell are vital local leaders and champions of our communities. Supporting initiatives like the Scarborough Walk of Fame are important in recognizing the magnitude of impact that these leaders also have the, on the vibrancy of our communities and our cities. I think we could all agree that neighborhoods infused with arts and culture are where we choose to live, work, play, and learn. On behalf of Choice and Daniels, we'd like to extend a heartfelt congratulations to Randell on his induction to the Scarborough Walk of Fame. Arts and culture. Thank you, As Randell says, there lies a seed of opportunity in every adversity we face. We suffer to inspire. And it's work like that which has helped Randall Ajay achieve the honor of Ontario's first poet laureate. Randell is an author, inspirational speaker, arts educator, and community leader who uses the spoken word to empower and transform through what he calls edutainment. An early life full of challenges is now turned around and is serving as proof positive of the ability to strive for the powers within to enrich one's life. This proof positive was showcased in 2018 when he published his debut book, I Am Not My Struggles. Ajay is founder of the long-running youth-enabling organization RISE, reaching intelligent souls everywhere an arts organization and talent incubator for young writers and musicians of color in the Toronto and Scarborough area. The community of Scarborough is delighted to induct Randall Ajay into the Scarborough Walk of Fame. First of all, Scarborough to the world! Man, um, I think I really first want to start off by saying uh, something I've lear I learned at a really young age was this concept, this quote that really, really inspired me. And it started off pretty much by saying that the best way to find ourselves is to lose ourselves in the service of others. And it's a quote from either Mother Teresa or Mahatma Gandhi. But when I think about, you know, just being here, I think about all the incredible people in Scarborough that have had an impact on my life, who have served and supported and helped me in so many different ways. But this award goes to two, well, one person and one group of people, but this, this award mainly goes to any black child that has been written off, labeled, told that they couldn't do it, told that they were the worst student in their class, the worst student in their school, any child who's ever experienced any type of adversity or anybody who's told them anything less than what they were, this goes to you. I mean, nobody ever. May nobody ever taint your vision, tell you who you should be, how you should move, but that was my story. I started off as a really troubled kid, and I just wanna ensure like, it's, it's clear that I, didn't, I wasn't always a star. I, I lied. I was. 
I think it was just, just needed a little bit of polishing, a little bit of, 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 of polishing to really get that uh, possible. But I'm just so grateful to be here. Um, I want to dedicate this award also to my mom, my dad, who's not here right now, but my mom celebrated her birthday yesterday. And I want to dedicate it to her. Uh, mom, thank you for all the sacrifices you made. Thank you for just pushing through, having a vision, believing in us. You know what I'm saying? Like, just thank you. No one knows the, the hardships you went through, but I'm just, I'm just grateful. I'm not, I'm not going to do that, but I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Thank you so much, Mom. Whew. Okay, I got a little emotional. But um, I'm Warden in Finch. I'm Warden Park in Lawrence. I'm Markham in Ellesmere. I'm Meadowville in Lawrence, Midland in Lawrence. I'm Malvern. And speaking of Malvern, I want to just shout out Mother Teresa again for the second time. MT produces champions. MT produces so many incredible people. And when I think about MT and what it's done for me, man, I, I, that high school's done a, a, an amazing thing. I wouldn't share this normally, but recently they named the library after me. I was like, wow, I, I couldn't believe, couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. But thank you to MT and, and the community of Malvern for supporting me. I want to thank uh, Mr. Fry, uh, who was my grade five teacher. I want to thank Ms. Samartis, who's my grade eight teacher. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Destiny, who supported me in grade 12. Yeah, rest in peace to Mr. Destiny. Um, there's so many people who we have the opportunity to touch just by being ourselves. There's so many people that you inspire just by being you. So many people who are inspired and empowered to continue doing what they do because you chose to wake up, wake up today, because you chose to follow your passion, you chose to follow your purpose. And I want to thank all of you for being here because whether you are cognizant of it or not, somebody out there is inspired just by your doing you and being who you are. So thank you for being yourself. Uh, Aisha, um, I'm, I'm, forgive me, Mateo, there's somebody, Kateo, Aisha, Kateo, Lily, Sean, Andrew, Glenn, man, thank you. Thank you, because in your own way, you've inspired me just by being your own selves, and seeing you come up on this stage and speak was really beautiful. But thank you, because your legacy will continue to inspire a number of different people just by being you as well, so I appreciate that. Uh, this is a full circle moment for me, and it's a full circle moment for me because I had a vision when I had a near-death experience. And I wanted to do something in Scarborough that could really change the perception of Scarborough and give young people in Scarborough a space that could be safe for them to express themselves in a positive way. And that space happened to be upstairs right there at the Scarborough Youth Resource Center that no longer exists. So I want to thank Everton Clennon, who's right there. Please, sir, put your hand up. People got to know. This man right here was the, door, the man who opened the door. That man opened the door to ensure that we could have a space to do what we did. So I'm just so grateful. I want to thank my team. I got Marissa and Elle that are here on my team, so thank you both for being here. But I want to thank the whole RISE community because we started off with 23 people, went to 25, 30, 50, hundreds of people started coming out. And I'll never forget on July 16th, um, 2012, you know, that Danzig shooting. A couple young people came to RISE and said, you know, had it not been for RISE, it would have been at the barbecue. Someone just told me that yesterday, again. And so I, I thank the community, of Rye, of, uh, the community of Scarborough for supporting RISE and making RISE what it is today and ensuring that, you know, we can have a platform and a space to show uh, the incredible gifts and talents that we have as well, too. Man, there's so many people to thank, but I'm going to pause there. Um, but I want to thank my family, my friends, uh, the love of my life, uh, this incredible human being that I had a, a chance to meet and who's really supported me and just believed in me uh, for a long time. But thank you all for doing that. Um, I want to leave it off with this. Uh, I'm someone who, from a young age, I've always known that I was an old soul here. And because of it, I just really reflect on this concept of legacy. You may see stars here that are being celebrated, but we are all a constellation. And whether we shine brightly for the, the, the bright lights to see or the darkness to see, whatever it is, I just want to remind you all that you all have this opportunity to leave a legacy behind, that people can be inspired by your being here. And I hope that the dash that you will leave behind will make not only Scarborough a better place, Canada a better place, but the world a better place. And thank you to everybody who made this possible. Appreciate it.
could have all our honorees up on stage so we could have a nice group photo. Thank you. Example of what Scarborough can accomplish right here. I think we speak on behalf of um, everyone to say thank you for all you have done and for being such fine ambassadors to Scarborough. Well done. Congratulations. And we'd like to invite the family and friends of these wonderful inductees around to the Star Court to watch them. Uh, well, everyone can come, actually. It's not limited. It's not a VIP room. Um, to watch them reveal their stars. So if you would walk around.
Congratulations, Sean. All right, Andrew, we're looking forward to your pose. <laughs> Andrew Arafazama. Congratulations, Andrew. Glenn DeBearmaker, come and reveal your star. Congratulations, Rendell. And now we'd like to introduce Ryan De Silva. Ryan. Good afternoon, everyone. This is an incredible turnout. I'm Ryan De Silva, and I am the general manager here at Scarborough Town Center. The Scarborough Walk of Fame is a very meaningful event for STC and it's an incredible opportunity for us to recognize the impacts, the achievements and contributions of Scarborough honorees. STC is the heart of Scarborough and it makes perfect sense that we honor the outstanding achievements and community members in a place where they see their families, friends, neighbors, colleagues, teammates, and fans, and all can see the stars shine. Today's ceremony for the newest inductees and the very special rising stars in our community. It's been a number of years since the last in-person ceremony, and we are glad to host this celebration, which is which is fully accessible and without barriers for all residents. And it's also being live streamed to Scarborough 
and beyond, which is also a first for the Scarborough Walk of Fame. This year, we're pleased to be unveiling a new digital pillar to showcase our inductees today and throughout the year. The Scarborough Walk of Fame is an integral part of the shopping center and our city as we connect millions of people from the community who walk through our corridors every year with inspiring leaders who make the region great and make Scarborough shine. Thank you all very much for joining us here today and I'd like to present to you our pillar.
Thank you. 